listening to the bomb hole. Bomb hole podcast. It's going to be very hot. It's going to be very uncomfortable for everybody. <laughs> the bomb hole. Gonna slide down in big hills. You know what I mean? On a big, nice burgundy snowboard. Okay, here we go again. We're back in the booth at the bomb hole, which is presented by Pub Beer and Liquid Death. Now, to my right, Mr. Stony Buds Eastone. How are we doing, my dog? So good, my dog. God, I love hearing that. Warms my heart every time. Now, to my left, our guest today is Alexis Roland, a.k.a. Lexi. Uh, she's a ripping snowboarder, all-around ripping human. Now, Lexi, uh, we're happy to have you in the booth. How are you doing today? Thank you. I'm pretty stoked to be here. Uh, got to do a nice workout with you earlier, which mm-hmm. was a ton of fun. Uh, but, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, we rolled up this morning. She came into the sect, uh, our gym that we go to with all the boys. You got Jeremy Jones, Sage Kotzenberg, and she went in there, and she was just kind of handling business. Handling down business. There. <laughs> she she kind of her own, huh? She kind of went to war on the squat rack and really? was just like, <laughs> what up? I'm Do here. Do more squats than Tonino or what? Oof, Tonino, he's he's kind of built like a brick <laughs> shit house. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been a minute since I've been in the gym, but my dad was a personal trainer, so growing up, I felt... Like, I was in the gym all the time, so I felt pretty comfortable so being in there. you knew what you were doing in there. Oh, yeah, nice. definitely. She's a natural. It's, and not intimidated, too, because there's, like, 15 dudes <laughs> yeah, that are all, squad. like, and well, then she's <laughs> like, yeah, what up? What are we doing? My entire life, I'm at, I was either in the gym or, like, snowboarding with all these dudes at Highland, some of the best rippers around. Mm-hmm. So, like, can't be intimidated. Yeah, Just nat- another day. Natural yeah. habitat. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's run it back, too, because you are you flew in from, you're from the Midwest. Yep. Gr- grew up in Minnesota, Correct. Correct. And uh, one thing that's really cool that's fascinating, you know, if, if you look at your history at age nine and 10, you have a video part with 300,000 views from when you're 10 <laughs> years old. Yes. Now, so you were basically a child prodigy, you know, and uh, I want to just, just dive right into that. Like, what did your childhood look like snowboarding? Where did you ride? How did you get so good? Ah, uh, shit. Okay. Big questions. Um, my childhood. So I started snowboarding when I was like five, uh, Highland Hills. It's my home hill, grew up there, Um, and from there, uh, my dad was basically my coach. You know, he didn't know anything about snowboarding. He, we started snowboarding together. He's like, miserable as fuck, the winter sucks, let's do something that's like, not terrible. So, we just kind of got out there, and he introduced me to snowboarding, and we just like, learned together, Um, and... Yeah, so... Uh, and then you're, you're homeschooled, correct? Yeah, so I went to a Spanish immersion school, kindergarten through third grade. So we all our classes were in Spanish. We weren't allowed to speak English in school. Um, so that was like four years. And then uh, when I was in fourth grade, I started snowboard or I started doing uh, homeschooling. That way I could snowboard more. Because, you know, school doesn't work super well with, like, snow schedule. Why Spanish immersion school? Um, my dad's family, or... Uh, my dad's like Mexican and shit, so like uh, Spanish is dope as fuck. Are you nice with it or what? Yeah, <laughs> as the Espanol, <laughs> how are we doing with that? Uh, puedo hablar español. Oh yeah, she's todavía got you. está en mi cerebro. Uh, mm. Estudia en biblioteca. Ha, <laughs> ah, sí. <laughs> uh, I'm wearing pantalones. <laughs> I'm wearing. Y zapatos. <laughs> oh, Dios uh, mío. <laughs> As you can tell, okay, we can do this whole podcast in Spanish if you want. So one thing you said earlier in regards to going back uh, to snowboarding at a young age, um, we kind of asked you on the Patreon interview, best advice you've ever received uh, about snowboarding. And I thought you had a fantastic answer. So the best advice I've received like for snowboarding is actually, so where your eyes go is the most important. So if you want to go to the end of the rail, look at the end of the rail. If you're looking down, you're going to go down. So like... And if you want to do a spin, like if I'm trying to do 360, keep, I tell people, super glue your chin to your shoulder and keep it there until you land. So, boom. Super glue. And then, yeah, keep it there till you land. You know, with photos, I can always tell when someone's not going to land in a shot where their eyes are looking. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. Someone's in a sick front board or something. They're looking over there. It's like they, they didn't make it to the end of the room. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. That's the yep. surefire way to tell. I've had some coaches uh, say when I was jumping, like, look, also don't look at the knuckle, look down the landing. Down the landing. Mm. That's also a good yeah. pointer when you're coming, when you're spotting your landing. Don't look, like, right at the top. Look where you want to ride down. Um, thought that was fascinating. But, yeah, so, so you know, at, at age 10, if you know, you obviously have to have parents that push you a lot. Like, what types of things did, did your dad do uh, to enable you to get so good at a young age? You know, what were you doing? 
Yeah, so we did a bunch of shit. Like, I was in the gym at an early age. You know, we'd go there, do a bunch of not only, like, some lifting stuff, you know, as a kid, but also a lot of stability stuff. So, like, I'd stand on stability balls, do squats, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, Indo boards, all that stuff. And then my dad really focused on the fundamentals. And when I would snowboard... Before, like, I could do a 360, he'd be like, okay, you have to be able to do 180s every single way, you know? And it was like that. Like, if I could do something switch, or <laughs> if I could do something regular, I had to be able to do it switch. Mm -hmm. And I think just that focus on really using the whole body and taking a whole pr approach to snowboarding really made me a good snowboarder, I'd say. No, you need that, you need that good foundation. In order yeah. to do a good front 1080, you if you can't do a good front three, you build off of everything, your initiations and, and your, your kind of building blocks for spinning and rotating. And I, uh, Stevens, Scott Stevens is a good friend of mine. We used to like, we'd spot riders and the term we would use it. Oh, that, that guy's a step skipper. Like he could, oh. he could front to the rail, yeah. but he couldn't front lip it or something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you don't want to be a step you don't skipper. Don't want to be a step skipper. No, even like when I'm trying to do like tricks again, like I'll work my way up. So like, if you ever watch me ride, you can tell kind of what tricks I'm like going to do next. So like if I want to do a cab two, okay, I'm going to do like a backboard, backboard same way too, back or uh, cab one, cab one, back one, you know, and then from there I go immediately to the cab two. And like, mm -hmm. because I've done all those steps, like I landed immediately. Mm -hmm. But now Bob Plum was saying, if you've ever ridden with you, which I've just watched you from afar, but he was saying you have a, a very interesting uh, warm up process about how your first run sets the tone for the rest of your day. Oh yeah. So uh, another thing my dad said was uh, we were at Keystone. He's like, okay, no more board slides, no more 50 fifties. Like if you're going to do like first lap of the day, you have to do like front boards and like switch front boards and like, you just have to set the tone. Like when you do those tricks, it really sets the tone higher for the rest of your day. Because if you do like a switch front board or front board, like first lap, what the hell can't you do? Mm -hmm. It's like the Sage and Hale do the first run cab nine. <laughs> Same kind of thing. I don't know if you've seen that. They roll up and no. just, they'll go to the bottom jump and just chuck a cab nine. Hale <laughs> might not even grab. But yeah, like at that point, you're like on cloud nine, right? Yeah, it just gets you yep. ready to go. Or huh? you're just in the hospital, one or the other. <laughs> First run, huh? Yes. I want to shoot an early Patreon question because yeah, it. it's about yeah. what we're talking about, and it's from Ryan Paul. Oh, RP, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Stoked he's a Patreon, and uh, everyone else yeah. is a Patreon. Thank you so much for your support. Appreciate it. So can you tell us a little bit more about your dad, the backyard terrain parks, and the trampolines, and other ways he's helped you along the path to becoming the amazingly ta talented border you are today? Yeah, okay, um, so my dad, uh, he's been my biggest supporter, um, he's coach dad, you know, always out there growing up, yeah, he was out there with me every single day riding, like, um, but yeah, he, yeah, he went above and beyond, so like, when I was like younger, he actually uh, made a snow machine and like blue snow in our backyard and like it would have all the homies come from Highland, you know, uh, like just, I don't know, whatever, like RP would come to the backyard and be like, okay, grab a bunch of shovels. We're building a snowboard park, you know? And so we had like a 10 foot quarter pipe in my backyard and like hella rails. And like, we set up some like tubes on the lake and shit. Um, and yeah, that was, uh, I was really, really lucky as a kid and I didn't, quite appreciate it as much as I would have now. Now I look back and I'm like, oh, damn, like I really miss that. I wish I could have that again. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so he did that. And then like um, the trampoline is one of those things that I probably one of the best things for my snowboarding. So he like got a like just a rectangle trampoline and like put a bar across it. And, you know, I mean, on my Instagram, you can see like videos of me like popping on doing stuff. But the muscle memory that you get from doing that type of like training, especially when it's like repeated over, over, over mm -hmm. and again, um, you really like your muscle, you get the muscle memory. And mm -hmm. like once you go back on the snow, it's like you've done it a thousand times because you have done it a thousand times, mm -hmm. you know, that I don't know. I like to think of it as like. All rails are the same, like the movement's the same. The only thing that's different is your mind, you know? So like if I like even just put like a piece of tape like on the ground and shit and I do the tricks onto that, like your body doesn't know the difference between that and actually hitting the rail. 
So like it's literally just in your head. So if you do it like either on the ground or on the trampoline a hundred times and then you make sure you get out of your head and you put your like thinking brain to the side when you snowboard, you're going to land it like that. Um, when I did like my first like back one like or back one onto like a street style rail, I had been doing it on the trampoline like so many times and like I popped it out and like landed it right away. Sounds a lot like Chris says he goes hollow head. Yeah, well, you well, put your thinking brain to the side, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, once you once you've done the work and you've practiced, mm-hmm. you you really you got to trust that you know how to do it yep. and turn off your analytical brain and trust your just na- your your the work that you put in and yeah. you say, oh, okay. And, and I recently read a book called uh, Outliers, and they talk. Oh my god, I love that it's book. It's a great book, right? Yeah. And I, I kept thinking about the ten thousand hours chapter. Yep. They basically they basically describe the only way to get good at anything mm-hmm. is to spend ten thousand hours doing it. And when you take somebody like yourself that uh, is got that many hours in as a, as a younger child, like you're, you're basically have such a big advantage over somebody as you get older with that, that much time on the board, that much time training really in order to be great at anything you need to put in, they say 10,000 hours. You yeah. Know, and go, you have to do an hour. Um, <laughs> well, this will be my 17th season. So I hope I've gotten like around 10,000 hours yeah. now, but like, yeah, when you're out there, like I've spent a lot of time just really focusing on like my mental state while I'm snowboarding because it's so easy to like when fear grips you, it grips you fucking hard, Mm -hmm. you know? And I've been like on, like I've been in places where like I'm crying and like I'm shaking because I'm so scared, you know? Mm -hmm. But like, you gotta like, you grab that, you put it to the side, you know, and then just do it. Um, which is easier said than done. But like, for me, it was really about like, okay, what do I have to lose? Okay. Well I might get hurt, which I've fucking done a thousand times, you know, or, I'll land it, you know, and kind of like my goals and what this will lead to, like me landing this trick is more important than just, you know, some temporary physical pain. Mm -hmm. That's, I've always felt the same way during, you know, filming video parts that the, the pain of leaving without trying a trick was worse than leaving after getting destroyed. A hundred percent. You know what I mean? Like that, 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 uh, like knowing you should have tried it. And, and then going back earlier to what you were saying too, you know, showing up and busting a front board, switch front board, first run, what, what you're essentially doing, same with cab nine, first run, is you're you're getting out of your comfort zone. And the comfort zone is kind of the enemy if you want to progress in snowboarding. Mm-hmm. So when you when you make a pattern or a habit of getting out of your comfort zone, it sounds like that's what you guys were kind of consciously doing. on a, Yeah. You know, with, with your coaching, with your dad. And I, I wanted to kind of add something to that, uh, just a question in regards to having a dad that pushed you so hard, did, did that turn you off or burn you out or did it, did it take away, um, the, the like joy for snowboarding, the fun, did it suck the fun out of it ever as a kid? Shit. (laughs) Um, hard hitting questions. Um, you know, it's been an interesting relationship with snowboarding. Um, I think that at times it was definitely like, it wasn't necessarily an outlet for me. Snowboarding was never like the outlet that I go do to get out of my head. It was, I'm going to work. Like this is like, and yeah, I get to go on fun trips and I get to do dope shit, but it's me, it was me going into the office and like, you know, I definitely put a lot of pressure on myself, um, you know, and like, and having sponsors at a young age, like that was really like stressful, you know, and like I didn't think about it, but like, I, you always have that kind of in the back of your head, you know, um, that how you snowboard defines your value. Mm-hmm. And I'm just now starting to like separate out who I am as a person from like snowboarding mm-hmm. and realize like, okay, like I am a whole human outside of snowboarding and like, like my snowboarding doesn't define my value, mm-hmm. you know, but yeah, it definitely probably changed my relationship with snowboarding, but I think that having that foundation uh, has allowed me to really come into snowboarding on my own mm-hmm. and like take those tools that I learned and kind of just run with it. Yeah, that's kind of a black belt move to realize at age 22 that your value as a person is not tied to your your value as a snowboarder because as as whatever defines you, be it a snowboarder, skateboarder, artist, uh, you know, fill in the blank. A lot of times we tend to tie our self-worth to our 
thing that we identify as. And so, you know, you see a lot of pro snowboarders as they, they get on the back nine or round the, the peak of their career or, or get dropped by a sponsor. There's a big struggle with that because people's, their, their self-worth is attached to their, how they're doing in their career. And those are two separate things. And it's, you're, you're wise beyond your years to realize that. <laughs> she started at nine though. So yeah, I guess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was five when I, I mean, started. started five. like more professionally. <laughs> yeah. I got sponsored by Burton when I was seven. Seven. I signed my first so contract you're, at you're seven. You were punching in at the office at <laughs> yeah. seven. Yep. What kind of, what kind of biscuits are we talking for a seven year old yeah. out of curiosity? <laughs> Uh, I have no fucking clue. <laughs> <laughs> I had a pizza party at California Pizza Kitchen, signed the contract with some of my little first grade friends around, and that's that. And your dad pocketed the money. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> well, you had a, she had a rock star uh, deal, right? Or the uh, they sent me, they flowed me some, like, swag oh so, okay I, yeah. I was just wondering i saw that i saw the sticker i was wondering about that well one thing we should dive into is um basically you're you're homeschooled at a young age right and yep. so and with snowboarding you know it seems like you as, as we were talking in the car earlier you you were looking for a place to fit in but it, it seems like you had a hard time fitting in at a younger age uh, maybe due to the social aspect of like not having the school or this do you want to elaborate on that what your experience was like I would say I felt very isolated growing up. Um, all my friends were in school, you know. Um, I left I left my Spanish immersion school, and it was immediately like, okay, my entire life is going to be snowboarding, training for snowboarding, and school. So, like, I'd be home, and my dad, like, I'd be home, and then, like, doing schoolwork, and my dad would take me to the gym, and, like, during the day, and I'd go to the gym, and then we go to, like, Highland and shit. And I didn't really have a lot of opportunities to interact with people my age, um, like I had my younger brother and stuff, but he's was off doing his thing. Um, but yeah, especially since like I go to Highland, like during the day when it was like sick, you know, conditions are like perfect, but I didn't really get that snowboard community. Like a lot of people had just because again, like it was like, it was a very, it felt like a really serious thing. You know, I was there, I was training. It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to go snowboard. I'm going to go like do fuck off, like do whatever. It's okay. I'm here to train. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, I felt very, um, I, I got really shy at one point and then, you know, I just didn't felt, feel like I really belonged at Highland or anywhere really just because like, I don't know, there's all these teenage boys and I'm in my head and I'm like, I don't know how to talk to these people. How the, what? I don't, I don't know about anything about snowboarding. I snowboard, but like, I can't talk to them about like what, like the people like fuck what do you even talk about in snowboarding like when you're that age mm -hmm. you know and so um yeah and it was kind of just one of those things where like I didn't say hi to people and people didn't say hi to me you know and I'm sure some of that came off as like oh she feels like she's like too good and whatever but it was literally just I was so shy like I didn't even know how to talk to people well, I think this is a great topic in general because I don't care who you are or where you're from, but I think people generally, they, well, they want to fit in. They just, as a human, you want to fit in you, especially to, you know, your, you know, we've talked about it on other shows, but we don't necessarily have, we're looking for a sense of community, be it, you know, some people go to church for that. Some people have their, you know, even school can be a sense of that. But for us, I think a lot of us, it's snowboarding and skating and, and snowboarding and skating are very clicky and it's very, very hard to fit in and you, you know, especially if you don't check the right boxes or wear the right clothes or say the right things. And we all tend to just mimic each other and look exactly the same. And when somebody doesn't fit that mold, uh, snowboarding and skating, and especially are quick to just say like, you know, yeah, you know, be judgmental. They're just yeah. judgmental. Right. Well, and like I didn't grow up, like I didn't smoke or drink growing up. Like, mm -hmm. and so that was like another thing. Like I'd hear some people like, Oh yeah. Like blah, blah, blah. Like drinking alcohol out of like a water bottle. And I was like over here, like, ah, I'm just going to go chill and do some more switch riding. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, just very much like, yeah, I didn't really have any of those common things to like, interact, like connect with people about. And I didn't skateboard. Mm -hmm. Skateboarding was, it, it, skateboarding's terrifying, but mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah. When you were ripping and, and you were shy, so they probably just thought, you weren't talking to them too. Yep. So that's a huge barrier that was created and yep. could have been avoided, but they just thought yeah. you were stuck up probably. Yeah. And I was on like one of the only girls on the hill. So like how you, like everyone's awkward at the yeah. age. So how are you going to go talk, uh, go talk to this girl? Like, 
get the fuck out of here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were scared of girls, the, <laughs> the younger guys. So. Yeah, a lot of people I've noticed is what they do is they mistake kind of shyness or quietness for, oh, that person's a dick. Yeah. You know, and it's like, no, they're just... They, they're just reserved or keep to themselves. Or yeah, they're observant. also shy. But there's a lot of assumptions that people make, myself included, you know, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's cool. What kind of effect, you know, p- for people that aren't familiar, the rope toes at Highland Hills, basically you can get, I've never done the math. How, how many runs a minute? It's like two a minute if you want. Probably. So Highland Hills, you c- the one side you can get just under a minute and the other one just over a minute. So like literally you can do like 60 laps in an hour and then it's open for 12 hours a day. So, and think about that repetition on the rails, Dude. It's, it's, con- it's out of control. So yeah. what, what effect did that, uh, growing up riding these rope toe resorts have on you? Riding toe ropes growing up at, had huge effect on my snowboarding. I mean, obviously like, you know, being around that type of energy and like, I always talk about it, like equate it to basketball. Let's say like you do, like you throw it in the basket or whatever, and then you have to sit down for two minutes and then you do another throw. Versus, like, you just, like, keep getting that ball over and over and over again. It makes such a big difference. Um, and, like, if you think you were talking about the 10,000 hours, like, okay, if, like, you spend 20% of your time, 50% of your time on the chairlift, you're not really getting those hours, you know? Mm-hmm. Versus, like, if I'm out there on the tow rope, 100% of those hours are spent on my board, mm-hmm. you know? And then it's just awesome because, like, if you do a trick and you land it, like you can go do it right away again, rather than like sit on the chairlift or even hike up and like, you know, your body forgets a little bit, you know, when you do something right, you want to go do it right away again, just so you cement that feeling. Yeah. Repetition. Rep, uh, as Nick Baden would say, get those reps up, get those reps up. You know, it's like if I was an Olympic, uh, let's say I'm like, you know, people want their countries to do well. Mm-hmm. Like you're like, Oh, I want the USA to, do well in the snowboarding Olympics. There's like somebody out there that's probably their job, right? Like I would just like do rope toes everywhere. Rope like, toes. Let's, let's just put rope <laughs> toe parts. If we want to, if we want to raise like the United States to have the best generation of snowboarders, like literally just put rope toes in every park, you know, get those reps up for everyone. Mm-hmm. Oh, hundred percent. Like the a level of riding I see from just like, even like 13, 14 year old boys at Highland, like everyone's doing like, two seventies on like every single way, you know, like back lipping, like these crazy DFDs, like it's just insane. And like growing up with that, I was like, okay, this is the level of riding around me. I got to be able to compete, like keep up with those boys, you know? Now I want to kind of pivot into a different topic here. Cause I know at some point you basically kind of walked away from snowboarding a little bit for a few years. Mm-hmm. Do you want to talk about why you did that and what time that was in your life? Oh God. (laughs) Um, yeah. So I, uh, it was like 2014. We'll say I got, um, it was the mass like dropping of everyone got dropped from Burton, you know, like during that kind of period. Um, and I was part of that. And so at that point I had been on Burton for seven years. It was half my life. You know, I was 14 and, uh, a lot of shit was going on in my personal life, you know, like my parents like were getting remarried like and they just moved to like different houses and stuff and um you know it was really chaotic time for me you know um and with that you know the reason why like I'm better now and I'm able to more separate my identity out from snowboarding is because I went through that really hard period you know where I got dropped by burn and all of a sudden my entire worth like Alexis role in the snowboarder had no sponsors and what do you do? Like you're 14, you think your life is completely over. Like your life is over as you know it, you know? And so I, it really hit me hard, you know? And at that point, like I fucking hated snowboarding. I fucking hated snowboarding. I wanted nothing to do with it um, because all like, it was just painful, you know? When I, I had a couple friends and like, when they introduced me to people, like, I found this out later, but they, like, would be like, hey, so, like, don't ask Lexi about snowboarding. Like, just, like, don't talk to her about it. Like, and I'm really thankful my friends were, like, knew me in that way and could, like, help me out with that because I, you know, when you're 14, you don't have the emotional bandwidth to, like, handle something like that. You know, like, when adults lose a job, like, that's really fucking hard. Um, But, yeah, so... I fucking hated snowboarding. I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't show my face at Highland anymore, you know, because everyone there knew me. They knew I was sponsored by Burton and like, I didn't really have friends there and I felt really 
uh, kind of ashamed. And so the only way like I could actually get into snowboarding again was I stopped going to Highland and I started going to Afton Alps. And that was really a turning point for me to find my love of snowboarding again. Um, I started going there. I didn't think anyone knew who I was. Uh, and I s just started talking to people on the trip like, hi, how are you? What's your favorite color? You know, just like stupid little shit like that. Um, and then I found a really good community there and I started making friends and, um, it really took me getting out of that space. Cause like, I didn't even feel like I could fall at Highland at that point. Like I was too ashamed to like fall and try and have, see people, have people see me fail, you know? Um, so going to Afton and just, you know, sometimes it's just important to switch up the environment. So doing that really like was a reset and it wasn't until like, I said, fuck jumps, started doing more rails, um, and then actually doing rail jams that, like, I fell in love with snowboarding. Mm -hmm. And then you, you kind of went on to have some success pretty quickly on, in some rail jams right after that, right? Yeah, I, um, so what I would do, there was this one uh, rail jam called Toe Up Throwdown, and I, would, I entered in a ton of the comps. They, would, like, went all around Minnesota and stuff. And I'd enter in the women's division. And then I, I'd also enter in the men's open class division. Mm -hmm. Since there was, like, maybe one other girl, if that. So, like, we'd do the women's division. I'd, like, consider that practice, you know, just doing whatever. And then I'd enter in against the guys. And, like, RP and, like, all these other dudes, like, Walker and uh, Juicy Joker and, like, all these Minnesota locals would go and um, fucking rip. And I'd look up to them. They're, like, a couple years older than me. But, like, I'm seeing them do these crazy-ass tricks that, like, I dream about doing, you know? Like, 270s onto these rails, you know, onto, like, a DFD or whatever. And this one comp at uh, Afton Alps, like, I remember specifically, like, Everyone was going hard, whatever, gap, doing, like, disasters at the bottom of the DFD. And I'm like, fuck, okay. Like, I've gapped to the bottom. I haven't, like, done much else. Everyone's doing gap 270s. Fucking, I'm just going to go ham, see how it goes. Like, I've never done a disaster two in my life. So I'm like, I fucking go for it. End up smashing my face, like, and landing it, like, three tries later. And, like, I didn't win against the guys, but I couldn't have been happier, mm -hmm. you know? That's a perfect segue into a guest question from Naima. Here we go. Naima! Hello, this is Naima. First off, I love listening to the bomb hole. Secondly, Lexi, I've got a question for you. I remember when we first met, you mentioned one of your goals was to compete against and beat boys at rail jams. I'll never forget thinking how much I loved hearing this, especially from someone so capable of making it happen. Is this still a current goal? If not, do you have any new goals you're working towards? Thank you. Bye. Oh my God. I love you, Naima. Um, <laughs> That's a great question. Yeah. So um, I have done competitions. So that that season, like I ended up going to a couple different comps and actually placing against the men. One of them, I got third place, men's open class. And the other one, like there was a couple qualifiers, but I got, I placed in the guys comp, which was su I was super stoked on, you know, cause like as a female rider, like lot of, there's a lot of misconceptions like because of our body stature or whatever how we're built we can't do the same tricks and that's fucking bullshit so yeah I definitely say like I want to compete against guys in rail jams mm -hmm. because I I know I can get myself to the point where I can keep right up with them you know and I think it really I don't know I see it as a way to push women snowboarding you know if they see me out there doing this shit with the guys they're like oh shit I can do that you know and even going to the big snow comp, like, and seeing the level of riding from, like, women was fucking insane. Like, uh, Ellie did, like, a sick back lip. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, I don't see, like, women do back lips a ton, you know? And seeing it in a comp like that, like, five years ago, I can't imagine, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah, I definitely want to keep... I, you know, and it's harder with, like, bigger comps, you know, because there is very much gender divide. Mm -hmm. But I do want to push myself to the level of the guys, do they try to not let you enter with the boys or? Um, you know, it really depends. Like, especially if there's like a women's division, you know, it's not, I mean, how do you go like, okay, I want to compete in the women's. And then like, I also want to compete in the men. Like it's very, I don't know. It's, it's a tough thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, but you know, it'd be cool to have like a non-gendered comp where like you just like, everyone just goes in, like you get the same opportunities, you know, um, because like. 
I think that would really help push the sport, you know, mm. because why you got to separate it by gender? Like you, if you try hard enough and you work yourself to the point, women can do the same tricks as guys and they can probably do it better. Not, I mean like, and, or make it look more steezy. I don't know. Like, that would be cool. Yeah, when you think about so when you think about the just in this topic, you know the the bridge between uh, men's and women's snowboarding. You know wh what uh, what do you think needs to change in order to to kind of level the playing field? What are some of the pros? What are some of the, what are some of the things that are doing good? Like we're doing well with, and where can we improve? Yeah, so I think it has a lot to do with getting more women out there in snowboarding. I mean, there's still a pretty big like divide between amount of guys riding and amount of girls riding. So I think just getting more women involved, you know, and then there is, I know with a lot of women like myself, like you have this uh, internal self-preservation that tends to be a little bit stronger than most guys have, you know, uh, I relate it to like, I'm looking at like, I'm on top of a two story building and like all my guy friends are like jumping off doing backflips yeah. and side flips or whatever. I'm standing up there like, fuck, no, I'm not going to jump yes. off this building. Why the hell is stupid? Mm -hmm. And I got to be there like, okay, one, it would be kind of fun. Two, it could look cool. Three, um, fucking why not? You got to create a little <laughs> Venn diagram before you get going. A little book, yep, you know, a little yep. checklist. But I think um, with women snowboarding, a lot of coaches have a hard time um, really getting into the mindset of, you know, how to break it down so it's not as scary. That's one thing my dad did really well is the reason why we did all these steps, you know, from the foundation up was so that I was able to do these tricks, you know, and like he'd help me rethink about how to think about it, you know, like. I don't know, man. Like, even when I was having a hard time doing back ones on two features at one point, like, I had a mental block. We'd take it back down, and he was like, okay, we're just going to do, like, some free laps and um, do back ones on the ground with your eyes closed, you know? And I'm like, what? This is stupid, you know? But taking it down like that and then bringing you back up to a rail, if you can do a back one on the ground with your eyes closed, like, you can do a back one onto a rail, you know? Um, but I think there's a lots of like little tricks that you can do to kind of like shortcut all those like fear messages. And I think it really just takes, um, coaches knowing how to do that and really like getting into the mindset of that rather than just, Oh, just send it. Uh, that doesn't work for a lot of chicks. Well, one, one thing along these lines too, that is an interesting kind of bigger, more blanket topic. I'll just take my sister, for example. She's got two daughters. Uh, and she's got me, she made me realize, like, rethinking the way that you raise women, right? So even on a deeper level, you know, women are raised to be more delicate. They're raised to be, oh, don't fall down. You might get hurt, you know, kind of yep. like, you know, valued for, you know, they're, oh, you, like, you, what do you say to a little girl? Oh, you're so beautiful. You know, you say <laughs> things like that, right? So, so they're, they're raised, whereas men, like, are, like, kind of, naturally you're strong. you're strong you're you know and like you know a lot of people's parents like a lot of men are, are shown love through their being good at sports right so yep. you're like that's my dad loves me when i do great at sports right that's like an association that happens with a lot of a, a lot of boys growing up so mm -hmm. i think that the reframing of you know for example like my sister i think i've brought it up on air but she's not like she doesn't let her kids play with dar uh, barbies if they want to or whatever they can yeah. but it's not to reinforce like kind of the the societal bullshit we put on women on a bigger level is something to think about what are your thoughts on that stuff um i absolutely agree with that you know i think that um your environment growing up really has an effect about how you think about things you know and i think that a lot of gender talk like you were saying has an effect on how a lot of women go in carry themselves into these different sports you know i grew up um around my dad we go to the gym you know i'm around all these buff men and women like and then I'd go to Highland or wherever and like I'm surrounded by dudes the entire time. And I like in my mind, I'm like, OK, I can't fucking cry. You know, like I like I eat fucking shit. First thing you do, get up, get out of the way, because like otherwise you'll get landed on because anyone who's been to Highland knows it's a fucking zoo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I think that, yeah, there is definitely a lot of that that, you know, and that can get more, you know, what you said back to your original point gets more women into snowboarding good for everything it's yep. good for the whole industry and uh progresses the whole sport i got a patreon question along the lines um from Callan wang 
we are talking about women snowboarding. How exactly do you think we can get more girls into snowboarding? I think it starts with like progression camps and just creating a safe community for women to get into it. So like camps like BT Bounds, um, I've done some coaching for them. That environment is super supportive and positive, you know. It's women dominated and, you know, when we come into like a park, you know, it's, you feel safer being around people that you're like, you know, because especially like parks are very like, okay, the only reason I'm not intimidated going to a park is because I'm very secure in my snowboarding and myself in that way. But like, as like an outsider, a new person, like if you come into a train park, it's very male, straight, white, male dominated. And like, you're afraid if you don't fit that bill, if you're not like, if you're older or like, if you're like, if you're whatever, you don't like fit into those boxes. You're like, shit, I don't belong here. Like even rolling up to a skate park, like I'm like hella nervous. I'm like, I don't belong here. I'm just going to turn around like and hop in my car, you know? But I think it's about creating a welcoming environment. And I think doing like female ride days is something that could really help uh, get more women into snowboarding. And then, you know, yeah, female ride days, you know, camps, that sort of stuff. And then just like, I don't know, just take your like, take your sister and like her friend out, you know, and like, don't just leave them at the hill, like teach them like, hey, this is how you turn, you know, bend your knees, you know, it's okay if you fall, like providing like reassurance, you know, and kind of like com helping them combat those self doubts that they don't belong there. Mm -hmm. You know, you're so right. You roll into a snowboard park that you've never been to. There's like, my oh, no, I oh. just wiped my nose. <laughs> so, when you roll into a snowboard park, you pull in there, there's like 20 kids sitting there, mm -hmm. and you're just like, oh, snap, what's going on here? What's what's the vibe? I, I kind of was, and this is a little bit of a different, not not a gender-specific thing, but I, I can relate in a sense of uh, with motocross, right? When I first started getting into riding motocross, you show up to a racetrack, and there's big jumps, and everybody's so good, and they're so fast, and you're like, holy shit, can I even go around this thing? Exactly. And, and it's like, and it's really, and so I think, you know, creating an environment where it's like, hey, we're just going to, like, keep her mellow over here. There's no, there's no like, psychos that are going to come, like, land on you on the jump. Let's just, you know, in snowboarding, you can, and like what you're saying with the women's camp, creating, in, in, like, an environments that are, are welcoming and not so intimidating are probably huge for yeah, that, that's too, huge. Right? Absolutely, yeah. And um, imagine on a women's day, you roll up to the park and there's 10 women sitting on the top just saying, hey, what's up? When you yeah. get there, you'd feel so much more comfortable. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially if like, yeah, you look at the park and you're like, I don't belong here. If you see more people like you in the park, you're like, shit. Okay. Like there yeah. are people like me. I I can do this, you know? And I think people also have to just remember, like, you just got to roll up and introduce yeah. yourself and yeah. be like, what's but, up? Because no one's really trying to vibe no. you. It's, it's in your head mostly, you know? Just say hi. Like, yeah. it's coming from a former shy person and still kind of shy sometimes. Like, just say hi. Yeah, like, say what up. You know, and if a person's an asshole, that's on them. That's not on you. Yes. Also, one, one thing I've realized in my old age that you you start to realize, and, and I've been bringing Leah to the skate park, and she struggles with this. She, You know, like, Leah's learning how to skate, my girlfriend, and she gets, like, scared of people there and things like that. And I always remind her in the same way, like, me going to the track, her going to the skate park, nobody cares. Yeah, they're you got to remember, she's there. nobody cares if you're good, if you're bad. Like, the people that are watching over there, they're not thinking. They don't care. They're like, I'm, I want to land my kickflip. I want to land my front board. They're just yeah. like, they, if you're good, you know, as long as you, but nobody really cares, yeah. you know, if you're yeah. good or bad. They're well, just even, stoked to see her drop in and yeah. have yeah. fun. Well, even more than that, like, I've made a point to tell people, like, you belong here. Not yeah. just, like, nobody cares. That's a good point. You belong here. That's yeah. right. Like, this is your park as much as anyone else. Just don't be a fucking asshole. Mm -hmm. Like, be an asshole and, like, try and learn the way of, like, don't stand on the lip of the jump, you know? Like, try and learn the rules, but... You belong in this park as much as anyone else. This isn't their space. This isn't th their space. This is our space. And you belong here as much as anyone else. And if someone's breaking the rules, maybe just tell them what's up in a nice yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Instead of yelling at them. Be understanding, you know, because <laughs> they probably don't know. Yeah. Unless they're ski racers, then, like, maybe you can yell at them. Well, and you might be saving them if they're standing on the <laughs> <Yeah>. lip, right? <laughs> well, the dad that comes in with, like, their two kids and, like, the ski train down yeah. the backside of the jump, you're mm. like... Ah, uh, like, I just don't want you to die. Like, you know. Shit happens. Okay, we're going to take a quick break to talk to you about one of our sponsors, Pub Beer. God, it's a great 
Is a great beer at a it's, great price? It's a great beer. And I'll tell you what, not many beer companies support snowboarding. No, they do not. Uh, if you want to support a company that supports the show, pick up some pub beer. Their motto is cheap, fun beer. Now with that, let's get into the pub beer crapshoot. Here we go. Welcome to the pub beer crapshoot. Uh, basically, how this works, Lexi, is you roll some dice, which I have in this mug here. Okay. And whatever you come up with, um, these are goon gear dice for the record. Uh, there's something on this board that we'll have to ask you a question about. And uh, it's presented again by Pub Beer. So, Pub Beer crapshoot. Roll those. The uh, goon gear is a six, I believe. Snake oh, eyes. Snake eyes. Snake Eyes, tell us about the time you went number two in your pants. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's a great one. Great uh, one for you. <laughs> traumatizing? Sure. Um, I was like some age, and we were going around like a thrift store, and I was like, I really have to go. I'm like, yeah, yeah, give us a few minutes. I'm like, ah, and, you know, um, yeah, I was Shit pretty happens. miserable. <laughs> Shit happens. I was pretty miserable. Uh, but, you know, that's in the past. Well, you know <laughs> Thanks for say, bringing that back up. You know Everybody <laughs> has a good they shit story. You don't, don't trust anybody yeah, without don't a good trust shit anybody. story. So that's, that's, that's a out of like one. Matthew McConaughey's quoted from yes, a magazine. Right? Exactly. <laughs> All right, we're going to get into the Volcom Bomb Hole of the Week, which is presented by Volcom Zip Tech. Now, let's talk about Zip Tech for a second, bud. Zip Tech is a feature that's patented by Volcom. And it what keeps, does it do? It yeah. keeps the elements, the powder, out of your uh, pant and jacket interface. I've used it. I love it. Basically, it connects your jacket to your pants. What's cool, if you have an older jacket or pants, vice versa, it works with the new Volcom system. So let's, let's just say, hypothetically, Stony Buds is violently tomahawking through the snow on a powder day. He's wearing Volcom. We getting snow in the pants? We are not getting snow in the okay. pants. Basically, keeping you dry, having fun all day, keeping you out in the snow longer. Perfect. Now, uh, what exactly is Volcom doing here for this uh, giveaway? They got something special, right? Yes, it's the Volcom bomb hole of the week, and it's uh, basically if you go on to Instagram and you hashtag Volcom bomb proof. Again, head on over to Instagram and upload your best bail and hashtag. Volcom bomb proof. And what's going to happen, bud? A Volcom rider is going to go through these every week, pick their favorite one, and then they're going to get a prize sent out from us combined with some Volcom swag and some bomb hole swag. It'll be great. So everybody out there, they bail. Everybody takes slams. Uh, why not get a get a box for it? So go yes. ahead. Again, hashtag Volcom bomb proof on Instagram, and uh, you'll probably get a nice package for violently pinwheeling down the mountain. Yes. Volcom zip tech interface. I want to lean back into what we were talking about before these uh, quick ad reads, and that was inclusion. And I think that's a really important topic in snowboarding. And, you know, like I said, it's it's very clicky, like we were talking about before. And I know that you said that you're working on a project in the future to maybe combat that a little bit. Power project. Um, Nolly and Lauren Nelson are going to be a part of it, along with a couple other people. Uh, basically, it's a project where I want... Um, to really focus on the community aspect of snowboarding, you know, and I want to give people who might not necessarily have the opportunity a voice, uh, a, a place where they can share who they are and stuff, you know. So it's going to be like a snowboarding movie slash kind of like documentary style as well. But, um, you know, it can be really intimidating rolling up somewhere and like you don't see anyone who's like you or anyone you identify with, you know, uh, especially with snowboarding being very much like you have to fit in these boxes, mm -hmm. you know? And what I really want it to be is like, you know, like if we're out at a spot, like come pull up, like let's ride, you know? Like you don't have to be the best snowboarder, just like be a cool human and like I'm down to vibe, you know? Like, and I think with this, I hope to give, you know, people an opportunity to share their story because it wasn't really until I started meeting people and actually talking to people and hearing their experiences that my mindset uh, began to grow, you know, and what I knew about the world and how things were or how they should be really began to change when I started talking to people. So, mm -hmm. and plus like, you know, it kind of comes down to like, it doesn't matter who you are, you know, you snowboarding is an awesome sport. You know, it's super sick. It's done a lot of good for a lot of people. And it we want you a part of that. You belong here. You belong in the space. 
So, like, come on out. Let's go ride, you know? God. The best part of snowboarding is the community, and it sounds like you want to create a space for young Lexi. Yeah. Where you were in your frame, you walked up to people and felt like you wouldn't fit in. You want to create the exact opposite scenario, and that's awesome. I yeah. Think that should help a lot of people. That's really cool. And I hope for it to, like, you know, help myself and, like, create, like, yeah, I want to help people, you know, but, like, I want to create a space, yeah, where you feel welcome, you know, and, um, yeah, something that my younger self would have been comfortable with, you know, because, again, it's really intimidating looking at it from the outside, you know. You're like, how the hell do I begin doing, like, street or this snowboarding or that snowboarding? Oh, I'm not good enough. Okay, that's not what it's about. It's about having fun mm -hmm. doing shit with your homies, you know? I can tell you, too, from, you know, that's going to hit for sure because, mm -hmm. li like, you know, Buds and I see – from, you know, we, we have a pretty direct line with a lot of our listeners. We communicate with them pretty openly. And I know that they crave that sense of, you know, being a part of the community. And, and you know, something we, we try to pride ourselves on with this podcast or we've noticed, like, it's kind of shifted is, you know, oh, you want to learn about snowboarding? Oh, you want to be a part of snowboarding? Come on into the conversation. Come on in. Oh, you want to, you want to like learn about tricks? Come on in. You want to learn about these riders? Come on in. Like, let's, let's bring you guys into this conversation that is snowboarding mm -hmm. and let's make everybody a part of it. And yeah. that's, that's exactly kind of, you know, what we, we hope to do with this and what, when you find people that are in alignment in that, it's really awesome because it really is this, is this intimidating thing where, you know, there's a cool kid club, a snowboarding. There's, the, there's the, you know, you wear your your cool gear and you do the right tricks, and and it has haters. And for you know, and I think that's how that's how action sports are. And and yep. and but it doesn't need that doesn't need to be how everybody approaches it. Yeah. And and that's one thing I have to say that I admire about yourself. One of the draws I was like, why why we wanted to have you on the show, I think is is really amazing, is because people's superpowers lie in their uniqueness, their ability to be unique, right? And, and in snowboarding, there's so many, you know, I think naturally just through, you know, we mimic our friends and, and they have a huge influence on us. What ends up happening is we all end up dressing, acting, doing the same tricks, th saying what's cool, what's not cool because of our friends and it becomes very clicky. That's just kind of, I think, how humans are. But one thing about yourself I've noticed is you got a, you have a duct taped helmet, <laughs> you know, you're, you're totally just like not, not following the trends of everybody else. And to me, I'm, I'm interested in that. Like, I'm like, that's unique. That's somebody that's actually themselves. Mm -hmm. That's a rarity in snowboarding. And so like, if you can harvest and say like, you don't have to just be like this to come into snowboarding. You can look like this. You can dress like this. You can do whatever you want. We'll welcome you with open arms. Like things like that, I think are awesome for building a much better community. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, like I, you know, I always have like, Uniqueness, like, okay, everyone, everything's been done a hundred times, you know, like being unique is really hard, but I think being genuine and being yourself, you know, is one of those things I really strive to be, you know, like I'm going to do shit because I think it's fun, you know, I was bored with my other helmet, so I fucking duct taped it. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, which by the way, would you both um, care to sign my helmet? <laughs> oh yeah, we're getting, we're getting our John Hancocks That's on here. Sick. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> That's go, a good look. That's here. a good look right there. We got Zeb. Oh, we got a Zeb Powell. Ooh. Yep. Uh, Do you mind if I rock it for a little bit for the yeah, episode? Yeah, absolutely. I might, have, <laughs> I might run it for a little while. Yeah, I'll throw a that little ziggy on here. Sick helmet. You duct taped the whole thing <laughs> for the listeners that are not watching. It's uh, got a really good look. You could actually maybe you could actually maybe start start these yeah. sign that thing, Buzz, and I'm gonna throw that thing on the it's, domer. <laughs> it's sicker um, than a lot of helmets I've seen. I mean, that, there's potentially a, a new brand that could become duct tape helmets. <laughs> yeah, Alexis Roland presents. Uh, find me on Instagram. <laughs> um, I can duct tape your helmet personally. <laughs> No, but that's that's uh, it's it's really cool to see. It's really refreshing. I would say it's really refreshing in in a refreshing in a world of of everybody kind of following the same trends. When you see somebody that that paves their own lane, and and I I like how you're also applying it not just to you're applying that to like gender and race and you know the gay community as well. Like, yeah, you know where everybody feels apart and and uh, I think it's it's killer. You know? Thank you. Yeah. It's taken a long time to get me here. Uh, therapy, five years, um, <laughs> ton of personal growth shit. But yeah, I, you know, it's hard figuring out who you are, you know, and um, I'm still in the process of that. But I kind of think like with myself, like, I don't, 
I don't know. I just want to be open and I want to flow through it and figure it out, you know? And like, it's hard to, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like that. That looks really good. The headphones, especially. Yeah. yeah. We got a good, good I look. Feel good about this. Yeah. I almost, I think I can go back to a kink right now. Like, yeah. Hey, go. you, you know? could fucking lace a kink with that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm that has rock. some good power. Yeah. That helmet has some good power oh, yeah. in it. Hopefully I don't give you head lice, but other than that, we should be good. <laughs> I, I haven't been combed for lice recently, but I think we should Shit. be all right. That was one of my biggest Whoops. nightmares growing up. <laughs> Getting lice? I, I would see like a white speck in my hair and I'd just start bawling. I'm like, no! <laughs> I <have> fucking nightmares. <laughs> um, yeah, it's rare you can be yourself, so that's really so cool that you've already figured it out at 22 years. That's so young to already, mm -hmm. you're wise beyond your years. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Appreciate it. Shout out dad. Uh, he had me read like Malcolm Gladwell and all these business books. It yeah, sounds <laughs> like up. your dad's a pretty amazing yeah. dude. Yeah. Uh, Roland Lab on Instagram. You should follow him. Uh, he's built the foundation for who I am. That's so. awesome. Question. I know from, again, from our readers and or from our listeners, I get uh, requested my book list all the time. Now, it sounds like you uh, are a avid reader yeah. what do you have for book recs for our listeners shit okay so the biggest one i've read this one like three times now um and i read it before hot dogs and handrails 2019 i read it before i did the do tour in 2020 and then i read it before this last comp it's called the champion's mindset it's by uh some like I was david just recommended this book yeah you were by trevor brady yeah yeah it's, it's worth reading yeah definitely the champion's Someone else mindset recommended it to you. Mm -hmm. Um, wow. I've read it multiple times and it really helps you just like, and it even works like just in regular life, you know, figuring out how to like work with your breath. I've been doing a lot of breath work, you know, and like separating, it's really helped me separate myself out from my snowboarding, you know, and realize my value is the same before a comp and after a comp, you know, like this glass comp at big snow, like. I, you know, I didn't do as well as I was hoping, but I came out of it a lot stronger, you know, because I went in with a really good mindset and was able to be secure in myself and know that this doesn't define my snowboarding. This doesn't find, define my career. This doesn't define me. This is just one snapshot of a bigger picture, you know? Um, so that one I definitely recommend. Um, a couple other ones, I'm going to say uh, Better Than Perfect. It's about, uh, I call myself a recovering perfectionist. Mm -hmm. uh, perfectionism can be great, but when it turns into very self-destructive, like self-critical, like beating yourself down, like it's not good, you know? Um, and so I've been learning how to be kinder to myself. So better than perfect is a really good one. And then I just put this up on Tuesday. It's called A Black Women's History of the United States. Um, 10 out of 10 recommend. Um, it can be some really heavy stuff, but, you know, you you can't judge how other people act unless you actually know something about their experience, you know? And as a white person in this world, like, I haven't had to experience any of this stuff, you know? And dealing with generational trauma, like, that is real. Like, trauma gets encoded into your DNA, and it can affect you for, like, generations to come, you know? And so I think it's really... I've really taken it upon myself to really start to begin the process of educating myself in some of these matters. Another really good resource for anyone who's looking for them is Crash Course. They have a Black History uh, series that they've started doing. So, beautiful. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, Grace is always talking about generational trauma. Yeah, yeah. Just I feel like I feel like you she's know wise. What, she's crazy. Yeah, wise beyond <laughs> yeah. your years, obviously. But yeah, just um, yeah. I think we get a lot of. I, I was saying that to buds earlier where we get a lot of our shit from our, our grandparents or our parents passed down bullshit, you mm -hmm. know, and, and if, if your grandparents went through some trauma, chances are it's going to trickle down to you. And, and that makes total sense in regards to, uh, you know, a lot of like a black woman's experience through history compared to, to ours, you know, and putting yourself in other people's shoes. That's beautiful. Yeah. Now, what was the name of the book? Sorry to change gears on you, but yeah. what was the name of the, the second book? The, the, the perfectionism. Better than perfect. Yeah, that I love. We should talk about perfectionism because I think um, it's really an interesting topic because it, it really can um, it can really debilitate you from doing just about anything. Um, oh, God, yes. Because, you know, well, I'm not going to start this project because it needs to be perfect. And I'm not going to... 
I, I can't film for the, I can't use this trick because it's not perfect. Everything needs to be perfect and it can debilitate everything you do. Whereas a lot of the stuff I'm reading, like uh, I'm reading a book called Creativity Inc. And, mm-hmm. you know, the motto is fail fast, fail early. Yes. And it's like, it's like, go ahead and just try shit early and get it done and, mm-hmm. and just try it. And like, yep. don't, don't sit around and wait for everything to be perfect because, oh, I'm a perfectionist. Oh, it's like, oh, you mean you're just like crippled? You're not going to do anything unless it's perfect? It's like, no, just try, throw shit at a wall and see what sticks. Fail fast, fail early, try things and learn from, you learn from your failures. You don't learn from being crippled by fear of doing yeah. something because you want it to be perfect. Yeah. yeah. I've, de- I've dealt with a lot of perfectionism growing up. I mean, like, okay. I've always been like a high stress human. So like mm-hmm. even like going back in kindergarten, I c- come home from kindergarten crying because the boys wouldn't stand in the line like the teacher wanted. Yeah. Like, um, but yeah, like I, it can be really debilitating. Like you said, like you can't even, it, it's really fear based, yeah. you know, you can't even start a project, you know, and, um, you know how you, like, it seems so overwhelming because you have to do it right. Mm-hmm. And, in reality, there is no right way. Like you said, just throw shit at a wall and see if it sticks, you know? And with my Instagram, um, the way I've gotten out of my perfectionist mindset is saying, Instagram's my trash can. I'm just going to throw trash in there. It's fine. It doesn't fucking matter. Like I'm playing the game. I'm doing what I need to do. So I'm just, I'm going to throw trash at Instagram. People want to see content. It's not that serious, you know, Mm -hmm. but putting it as like, just doing it like it doesn't matter how it turns out Mm -hmm. uh the first book i mentioned um champion's mindset one of the quotes from there is like be a deeply disciplined half ass like (laughs) (laughs) you know sounds like me (laughs) (laughs) hey i mean and it seems to have worked out for you Chris is like, yes, it does. <laughs> Working out great for Buzz. Let's give him an air horn. For that. I get an air horn. Yeah. <laughs> it might be my first air horn. <laughs> We've got a couple. Oh, we yeah, got, probably. We three. We yeah, we're three. at like 70 episodes. I've probably got a couple. <laughs> that's that's incredible. Yeah, love that. I love that topic. Uh, yeah, it's like another another take with the perfectionist. It's like, oh, I'm a perfectionist. Oh, so you're a dick to work for. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. there's a lot of the traits with that. But yeah, no, that's 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 great, inspiring news for people to that can relate. Is like, don't don't overthink it and just just do it. Yeah, Nike yeah. slogan. When you quit snowboarding, how long did you take a break for? Oh, I never like quit. You didn't quit, quit snowboarding. Okay. No, I was. Uh, it you was just too- got dropped and took a. It was too tied into my identity. I yeah. could never quit, um, I, which is really sad because, you know, I think it probably would have done a lot of good for me. But I think that I, I had nothing else. Snowboarding, li- like half my life, I was 14, half my life, basically all my conscious life was filled with snowboarding. I didn't have any hobbies. I didn't, mm-hmm. what, I started homeschool for snowboarding. I mean, what the fuck else am I supposed to do? Like, I felt like a failure, so like I didn't, I didn't actually quit. I just went on the hill and cried. <laughs> Are you so. able to go up and have fun now? Just shred, yeah, like with yeah. some homies and yep, yep. It's not work. You're punched out. Yeah, no, Taylor. it's um, yeah. I've definitely like the past couple of years been able to transition out of that, and like you know, when I did street this last year, I went out and I was like, okay, this is gonna be fun. As soon as I stop smiling, I'm gonna pull the plug. You know, and I was able to go out and I enjoyed every second of it. I was like, I'm going outside to hang out with my homies and have fun. That's why I'm here. You know, another thing I've been saying to myself is so I get uh, I have depression. Hey, um, (laughs) and anxiety and et cetera, et cetera. But um, kind of the phrase is like. If I'm going to be miserable, I'm going to be miserable outside. God damn it. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to just, I'm going to be outside. And like, if I'm going to be miserable, I'm just going to be outside and miserable, you know? Mm-hmm. So like going out and just at least going through the motions, you know, is really helpful. But yeah. Um, well, a lot of depression keeps people just crippled inside, basically. So yeah. that's awesome that you're able to get out there. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's got to help. Yep. Yeah. No, it's good. And like the fresh air is good and stuff. But yeah, I've definitely gotten into a place where like I can enjoy snowboarding again, uh, which is cool. Today, we're going to be talking to you about Bub's Naturals. Huh, Chris? Let me tell you about their little apple cider vinegar gummies. I've been chomping these things down. They are great for your gut biome, your gut health. Uh, I know that they helped out Angie, your wife, right? Yeah, they helped her out a ton. She takes them every day. They fix some stomach issues she has. Loves the taste as well. They're delicious. Yeah, it's not like you're choking down some gross. It's like eating candy, basically. It's like eating but candy. But it's good for your stomach. 
Uh, they also have their kind of token product, which is right in front of me here. This is the collagen protein. We like to mix up some shakes after working out, and it just keeps you, as you get older, bored and longer, you know, we start to deteriorate. This old chassis ain't running like it used to. You need things like collagen to keep it going, huh, buds? Yeah, I'm as old as it gets out there just trying to snowboard and keep up with these young kids. Collagen is the glue that keeps your body together. So if you're taking it, it's just going to help you feel better, recover quicker. Great product. And it's a great crew, right? They're backed by snowboarders. Absolutely. Owned by snowboarders. And if you are if you were born in the 1400s like Eastone, you need collagen to maintain. I think being, my body would probably just explode. It would explode. If I didn't have collagen in the system. Exactly. So yeah, great. This The company's got a great story. Owned by snowboarders. You know, Bubs was a Navy SEAL who, you know, lost his life saving others. And this brand, Bubs, is made to honor him. So you're supporting a great cause. 10% of all proceeds go to charity, which is great. You feel good. You're contributing to a good thing if you support these guys. And you can head on over to bubsnaturals.com if you want to support this incredible brand, huh, Buds? Yeah, you can get 20% off with the code BOMBHOLE. Again, head on over to bubsnaturals.com, use promo code BOMBHOLE, and get some collagen in your system. Now, earlier you mentioned five years of therapy. Shout out to five years of therapy, I believe you said. Your yes. <laughs> Should you give an air horn for five years of therapy? Uh, what uh, what would you say the main benefits are of the therapy and what type have you been doing? Uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. So a lot of just like talking through your problems and like finding like your mental uh, patterns, I guess, like X happens, so that means this, so that means this, and really challenging those beliefs that – Okay, so I uh, failed at this competition. Therefore, um, I'm a bad snowboarder. Therefore, I have no self-worth. Okay, let's walk that back. Okay, here's the competition. You failed at the competition. Okay, that doesn't mean anything about your snowboarding. And like really just diving into those things and giving them like a reality check, you know? And, um, you know, it's really good to actually open up and talk about shit. Um, you know, um, yeah, I find it really helps. Um, my friend, Laura, I don't know how to say her last name, Rogiski. Oh, yeah, Riganowski. Riganowski, yeah. I think it's something like that. I always butcher it. Sorry, Laura, if we didn't say Love that. Love you, right. Laura. Sorry. <laughs> um, but she started this uh, uh, weekly meeting called Mental Meeting. And she's coming out with a magazine and stuff. I think it drops, what's today? Uh, 20th, it drops? I think it's going to air like a month after. So okay. It, yep. It'll be out by now. Okay, yeah. So she dropped. She's going to be, it'll be dropped by this point, but um, her magazine really focuses on mental health and it has a lot of exercises and has like interviews of people and like their struggles and stuff, you know? And when I go to the mental meeting, it's like once a week on a Monday, you know, I all of a sudden feel less alone, you know? Mm -hmm. And because it's snowboarder based, it's really good for me. Like I, the Burton thing, I haven't been able to talk about, like it's mm -hmm. been seven, it's been over seven years since. And this is the first time I've able to talk about it, you know? Mm -hmm. And like being in that community, you know, and sharing some of those things, like all of a sudden you realize you're not so alone and a lot of people deal with some of this stuff, mm -hmm. you know? And um, it's just, it's, it's just a really cool thing. And I think it's really special to be able to talk with someone, whether it's a support group or your therapist, you know, shout out to my therapist. I fucking love you. Mm -hmm. Um, she's done so much for me, you Give know? Um, but yeah, my, so that's part of my current mental health journey, you know, but I'm in a really good place right now. Um, I've, uh, another thing that's kind of controversial. People don't really like to talk about, um, and I was really inspired when Jess actually mentioned it, but um, I take meds for uh, my mental health, you know, and I take those every day, um, which is something that uh, isn't super accepted. I feel like in some places of snowboarding, especially like, cause it's like really hippie and like, you know, natural way and everything. And that's great. Um, and there's definitely a place for that. But I know for me right now, um, I, my life is better because I take meds, you mm -hmm. know, and, um, there's nothing wrong with you for taking meds, you mm -hmm. know, some people's brains just are lacking the special chemical, you know, and that happens to be mine, you know, and, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm really thankful to have that opportunity to do that. And, um, it doesn't make you weak to take meds, you know, like 
I consider myself a pretty strong person, um, you know, and part of that is the strength to reach out and ask for help and take the steps in order to get better, you know, um, and that's, it's part of my journey, mm-hmm. you know. You that's, nailed it on the head. It's chemical imbalance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some people just have an imbalance. You got to take the medication mm-hmm. and that's just a fact, you know. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, that's a great reframe in the sense too of like, you know, there's a, there's a ton of, there's an old school mentality of like, <laughs> just dead serious. We're in this <laughs> <laughs> talking to serious <laughs> topics here, <laughs> but there's, there is this old school mentality of, uh, basically, you know, if you go to therapy, you're weak. It's a, mm. it's a, it's a sign of weakness. And if you're, and it's like, just fucking internalize that shit and just fucking no no it's like that's that's gonna come out in some weird way you're gonna have like an affair or you're gonna do some type of weird thing you know but but those the the like let's just it's nice to have a conversation that kind of normalizes hey like i mean i got a therapist it's awesome i do aa group therapy or good for uh, you not you know almost five years sober but congrats dude five years when this comes out i think somewhere that's awesome but not not to like make it about that but it's it's insane the amount of things that i was internalizing thinking i was going the only person in the world going through this and all of a sudden you're in a group room talking about some shit you're like oh you got the same problem as me oh you got the same problem as me oh yeah. I'm, we all got the same fucking problems okay i'm not i'm not that bad we're human you know? yeah but then like if you don't do that you're gonna end up fucking just torturing yourself right so yeah. go go talk to somebody go talk group therapy um or yeah. regular therapy you know, all those things, meds, they're all great. They're all yeah. great. Um, yeah, if know. you need them, take yeah. them. Is Laura's meeting is, that goes down in Minnesota or is it something no, she, on like Zoom? It's online, so it's on, yeah, it's Zoom. on Zoom. We'll have yep. the links to everything in the show notes. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, it'll be in the show notes. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, it'll be in the description. So we'll have to make sure that people can click through. Do you know how many people that. get on there? You know, uh, sometimes we'll have like five people. Sometimes it'll just be me and Laura, yeah. you know, and like... I'm when, sure after this, it'll grow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, and the thing is, like, when you have depression or you're dealing with shit, it's really hard to reach out because you, like, how the hell, it's overwhelming. How the hell do you reach out to a friend, you know? Like, I've been pretty good at socially isolating myself for a long time, um, you know, but it's good to have something consistent like this where no matter what's going on in the week, like, I log on and I... You know, even if it's just Laura, we can just talk for a little bit, you know, and have that like one thing. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, it's when you're struggling, you think you're a burden to everyone around you, mm-hmm. you know, and you think, oh, God, this person will be they, everyone will be better off without me, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, I was talking with my friend Hannah, you know, and like I get really low, lo- like everyone get really low self-esteem sometimes. Like and I'm like, I don't belong here. You know, I went to its tits and. I, it's like, it's like holy bully. So, you know, big like mounds and whatever. I'm, there's not a single rail in sight. I'm like, I had hella imposter syndrome. I'm like, I don't belong here. Like, what am I doing here? Like, I'm, I don't belong here. I shouldn't be here, you know? And, um, you know, when I'm kind of like brought that up, everyone's like, what? How, why would you think that? You know? So just for context, th- there was a, there was a, uh, basically, uh, a meeting of some sort, like a, where everybody talk a panel, I think it's called. And, at and its you, tits. At, at its tits. And you essentially asked, like, do you, does anybody else feel like they have imposter syndrome to yeah. frame that, right? Is that what yep. happened? Yeah. Yep. And, you know, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the framing. <laughs> Just so people understand the <laughs> yep. context. Yep. hundred yeah. percent. Yep. No. And like, um, you know, people might look at me and they're like, oh, you're such an accomplished snowboarder. How could you feel like that? Well, it has nothing to do with your status or what you've accomplished or anything. You can be the best fucking snowboarder and still feel like shit. You can be, you can have all the friends and family and still feel like they'd be better off without mm-hmm. you, you know? And that's why talking about and actually have a con- having a conversation, you know, it's scary. And that's why, you know, you just, you know, that's why I try to be open with my mental health because, you know, if I'm open about it, maybe it makes it a little less stigmatized for one person, mm-hmm. you know, and they feel a little bit more comfortable sharing, you know, and I know by me talking about it, it really helps me and it helps yeah. me to process things, you mm-hmm. know, and get some weight off my chest, you know, 100%. it's good to know that everybody else has a crazy rat trap between their ears. And you're not <laughs> the only one that's just like, am I going psycho? Because yeah. Yep. And then even, even to take it a notch further, like, you know, the snowboarding community has lost some lost some people and and 
you know, some, some due to some suicide even. And, and some of those people you look at, you're like, dude, this is, this guy seemed like the happiest person in the world. Like on the outside, you no, there's no signs. I mean, from, from certain perspectives and it's like, again, yeah. making conversation, talking about it. Cause it's like you talk, you internalize that, you know, who knows all the layers of those things, but it's important to talk about. Them. Yeah, I got yeah. Jaeger looking at me right over your shoulder, smiling yeah. away right there. Like yeah. I always remember him doing rest yeah. in peace. And it's interesting. You talk about Burton dropping you being so such a rough time. Yeah. Everyone's going to go through that. So yeah. it's good that you're ready for it now. I mean, yeah. <laughs> at some point it's going to happen again. Yep. Chris has gone through it. It's just, part of being a pro yeah so everybody get ready you're gonna get cut yep <laughs> <laughs> at some point well and like i was ashamed because i was like no one else has ever gone through this ever right? like yeah <laughs> which yeah. any snowboarder who's been like on a sponsor they're gonna get dropped at some point and a lot of child <laughs> prodigies not sean white obviously but a lot of them get cut at <laughs> yep. some point and then like hans and nils they both got cut from burton mm -hmm. burton has cut tons of people throughout because yep. they they pick that one person to move forward with mm -hmm. out of the 30 kids that they're bringing up. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. And it's just part of the game. You just got to... It's a, it's a system. You got to get know? strong skin as yep. a pro, and unfortunately, we don't have it. It's tough. You got to <laughs> go through and learn as, as you are and I'm, as life. I'm better with physical pain than emotional pain. <laughs> as you guys take those uh, stair massages, as they call them. Out there <laughs> yeah. the street, oh, so. my gosh. Yep. <laughs> Earlier, you mentioned... Um, uh, breathing, you're talking about how you've been doing some breathing. I've been and hearing that a lot lately, huh? Yeah, we, and uh, I actually heard a term for breathing, uh, nature Xanax. Uh, yep. <laughs> nature Xanax? Yeah, I like breath that. work. But yeah, you want to talk about how you incorporate that into your life? And yeah, so I, um, I've started, recommendation of my therapist, um, I've started doing some yoga stuff. So like, uh, just on YouTube or whatever, her name's Yoga with Adrian. She's super fucking dope. And um, I'll just do like her 20 minute practices. And she's really like conscious about breath work. So like, like earlier today when we were working out, like, you know, the cat and cow, yep. like she really focuses. Okay. So when you do the cat, uh, I think it's you breathe out. And then when you do the cow, you breathe in and like doing that with your breath, you know, and um, when you mirror your breath to your um, actions or vice versa, you really, it really feels centering, you know, and all of a sudden, like, things start to slow down, and the world doesn't seem so scary anymore, you mm -hmm. know, and w after I do, like, my 20-minute yoga session, like, I always, like, I always feel like, oh, shit, like, I know exactly what I need to do now, mm -hmm. whether that's create this, do this assignment, or whatever, you know, like, it gives me a clear head, so then I can move forward with my day. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about the cat and the cow? Cat cow. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's basically you stand there and you do like a, you're like on all fours and you're doing like a, uh, you, you like hunch shrug your, your back yeah, and like, then you, and, uh, which like is a actually, cat when a cat freaks yes, out. It's like, you. okay. Which is really <laughs> funny because we, we normally, it's just bro workouts there. Like it's <laughs> normally just like bench press or. But she came in and changed she, it. Changed she kind of came in and all of a sudden, like we were like, oh, you know, I was like, I didn't sign up for this. I'm, like, oh, <laughs> I'm just like literally just trying to hit the bench. That's it. <laughs> I'm going to try to be like this just stiff and like muscular. That's like. like I yeah, love how you walk into this group of dudes and just all of a sudden change the workout. <laughs> not <laughs> scared to be yourself and well, put it out there. Jeremy was there and I think he's seen some of my like workout stuff. So he's like, oh, I'm like, Let's we'll incorporate some of this yeah. stuff here. Sick. And we d we're doing overhead squats, which are require a little bit more flexibility, mm. for, <laughs> honestly. So that's, that could have played a factor. But So you got um, Chris in there doing the cat and the cow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her. on hands and knees, they're <laughs> doing cat and cow. It's a vulnerable, <laughs> it's a vulnerable yeah, position. Yeah, I wish I could have seen that room. That <laughs> Dude, you should have come in today. <laughs> it's a trust tree. It's a nest. It's, it's a, a trust, trust tree in there. The, it's, a trust, it's a trust exercise. I felt very uh, welcomed. Yeah, that's killer. I just heard awesome. about when the dust box went in there and half the kids puked after. Oh, so. no, really? Yeah. They worked them out to the... Yeah, we didn't hit a ton of cardio. <laughs> it's easier. The car cardio makes you puke. All right, I think it's time for the liquid death, spinning wheel of death. Uh, Buds, I just heard you kind of take a little swig. Ah, that's some good stuff. Of a lick Licky D, as we Licky like to call D it. and the boys right there. Now, uh, liquid death kicks ass. They, uh, they support the dust box. They support the bomb hole. Uh, they support a lot of great events in snowboarding. And uh, Pat Moore, he's our point man over there. Legendary snowboarder. Legendary. So uh, if you're interested in crushing some can and not contributing to all the bad plastic in the environment, get yourself a liquid death. You can get them at 7-Eleven, Whole Foods. 7-Eleven? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're not in the beer section. It looks like beer. Nope. Uh, but it's actually water. I'm basically a serial killer at this point. 
Yeah. <laughs> <Just> from murdering, <laughs> murdering my thirst yes. on the daily six times a day. Absolutely. I it's love got me drinking way more water. There's just something about water in a can. I agreed. I don't know what it is. I really love, like, you know, I noticed here at the office, I've been crushing liquid, liquid deaths, and I'll walk outside, and it's 9 o'clock in the morning. And it looks like a beer. I'm pretty sure a lot of the neighbors think we're alcoholics. <laughs> yes. So that's also a huge benefit is um, your neighbors might think you're an alcoholic with this. I often just crack one and straight up pound it too. And Shotgun. crush it and throw it on the ground. Exactly. So it looks like a beer. You but then I pick it up and throw it away. Get aggressive with it. Yes. So that's always fun. Uh, if you want to get a case of liquid death, head on over to liquiddeath.com slash bomb hole. And uh, that shows a bunch of support to us. You get a couple free koozies. Again, liquiddeath.com slash bombhole. Now, with that, let's get into the liquid death spinning wheel of death. Ah. Uh. To the liquid death. Death, death, death. Spinning wheel of death. Okay. Lexi, so how this works that's, is That's is the you, voice of Mikey LeBlanc, the guy behind you, straight behind you, with dude? the hand out. Yep. Dude, that's sick as fuck. I'm about whatever that music was. That was, uh, was yeah, some I actually made metal? that. Um, I just Googled uh, metal riff, I believe. Metal riff. And then oh I uh, took Michael LeBlanc's voice, slowed it down. And, Ooh. Uh, yeah, just got uh, Dr. Dre, Young Chop in the booth. So <laughs> what I'm going to want to do is give that thing a bit of a spin. Okay. And then what, give it a hard spin. And whatever it lands on, we'll tell you. Let's go. Liquid death. Uh-oh. Oh. Okay, uh, this is kind of a rough one. It's Uh-oh. heat bugs. How do you feel about that? I'm fine. Oh, yes. I used to like, uh, you know, the cheddar and cheese crickets are like. That's what um, these are, but oh, they're yeah. uh, larva. Oh, yummy. I've Yeah. We have not cracked into the Because we had bats. the crickets before. These are cheddar cheese. Yeah, cheddar oh, cheese. Oh, cheddar cheese. Yep. So You used to snack on these as a, re- in a regular uh, <laughs> setting, huh? Just at home for fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd get my brother uh, like the popsicles with like the scorpions yep. in them and everything. Mm-hmm. So they have those uh, on the aisle next to those. Yeah, she's no stranger to the large. I've bats. actually like went walking. Like my friend found a cricket, and I just like. Were you worried we were gonna have live bugs? It. You ate one. A I, live I one? ate a cricket off the ground. Live, really? Like, well, I I don't know if it was live, but mm-hmm. it was in my mouth. Ew! Do you ever eat a worm? Mm-hmm. Mm, I feel like I have, I feel like but I don't there's remember. There's certain kids that just eat worms. Okay. There she goes. Can I have more? Yes. Yeah, oh, Let's wow. She's crunch. chomping on the large Let's bats. hear the crunch there in the we mic. Go. Oh, wow. We're doing some ASMR. That's good ASMR. I can't, she's eating like, she, for the listeners, she just ate like a handful of larvettes. She's like putting <laughs> down the whole bag. <laughs> she's down with We're the cheddar <laughs> cheese flavor. <laughs> oh! Mm. <laughs> About a hundred uh, larvettes shit. just went down. Wow, <laughs> no, no. that's I can't believe she dusted the whole bag. That's out of control, uh, right there. That's a uh, dust box. <laughs> level right there. Uh, okay, wow, way to uh, absolutely. I would just call that pure showmanship with the the bugs. Yeah, it was incredible. Oh, full, thank you. Full bugs on the hatch. <laughs> The whole I am a barrel. showman at my heart. Yeah, that's you got to respect the showman. Show. We had Dan Breezy in here a couple weeks ago. I love Dan. He uh, wouldn't touch him. He, really? It was a he non-negotiable. Said, no bugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he's was not it. in not in the bugs. Well, you know, I can't be a little bitch about it. Like it, like that. Hear that, Dan? <laughs> so we're gonna. <laughs> no get offense. In, we're gonna get into a guest question. Uh, here we go. It's from one of your friends. What's up, guys? Hi, everyone at the bomb hole. Lexi, miss you. How are you? I can't wait to hear this episode. This is Kalia here. Okay, my guest question for you is back at Miss Super Park. Um, what was the nightly routine that you shared with me to do before I went to sleep every night that would help me get into a good headspace and reflect on something that I did that day and look forward to something tomorrow? Um, if you could share with everybody what you taught me then. That'd be awesome. All right. See you soon. Preseason at Troll. I love you, Kalia. What'd she say at the end there? What? What'd she say at the end? Preseason at Troll. Hockey. Preseason, oh, at Troll. preseason at Troll. Kinda yes. Pops it's there. right around the corner, huh? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I fucking love you, Kalia. So, uh, quick backstory. Kalia, we had competed at Do Tour the previous year, um, and uh, long story short, essentially, like, we kind of started talking the night before I left for Miss Super Park, and I was like, yo, you live in Iowa, right? She's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, well, you don't have transportation figured out. Can I just pick you up? And she's like, uh, yeah, okay. 
uh, we had only, we didn't really know each other. And then like 12 hours later, I picked her up like four hours into the 16 hour drive and we spent the next 12 hours like just talking and becoming best friends. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so the thing I was telling her, like this was a point where like I, again, like I struggle with depression mm -hmm. and stuff. And uh, I, one of the things I had been doing was um, what are, t what are like, uh, before, like, and she was dealing with some shit, and, like, when we were at Miss Super Park, um, every night before we'd go to bed, like, we were sharing the same bed, you know? Uh, you know how it is. Airbnbs, you all cram in there. Um, but uh, I, I asked her, like, okay, so, like, what are two things that were, like, good today? You know, like, not, like, two things necessarily you, like, enjoyed or loved or what was, like, awesome, um, you know, two things that were good, like, okay, I drank water today, that was a good thing, and then I also, um, I brushed my teeth today, that was another good thing, you know, and it can be really just small things, you know, but it, the point is to get yourself a little bit of success, you know, and feeling okay about yourself, and then I'd say, okay, what are three things that I think I could, I might enjoy tomorrow, not things, three things that I'm going to enjoy tomorrow. Cause you know, like that can be really overwhelming, especially when you're like, I don't, every day feels like shit, you know? And I, uh, thank you. Um, you know, and you're not really like mentally there. Um, so what are three things that I think I might enjoy or think that I could enjoy, you know? And one of them I remember was like, okay, I think I could enjoy, or like, I'm looking forward to having my chocolate milk in the morning. Um, I think I might enjoy like something that I think I could possibly enjoy or look forward tomorrow to tomorrow is like um, writing with my pink pen and then, um, you know, having raspberries for breakfast. You know, mine were a lot of food based, um, but doing that practice and we did it every night there. It just kind of gave us something like to just hold on to. And, like, really kind of shift into a mindset of, like, okay, there are, like, a few good things. And, like, even if I don't necessarily enjoy, like, even if I'm not feeling any sort of, like, real, like, happiness or whatever, you know, I think I might enjoy drinking chocolate milk tomorrow morning. Like, just giving yourself something that, like, holding on, just giving yourself something to hold on to that could, like, help you, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it all sounds like a, a really good way for a perspective shift. Yeah. Because when you're down, it's really hard to see anything that's good yeah. or anything that's positive when you're yeah. the luck's stacked against you, when you're down on your on your luck, so to speak. And all those things are really cool yeah. uh, perspective changers. And, and just to add one more uh, level to that, um, Leah, my girlfriend, introduced me to an awesome book. We've been doing it for years. Um, and it's called the five minute journal. Yep. So basically you write down three, I gave one to buds yeah, actually he gave me one as a gift. It's yep. awesome. Nice. Yep. And you, so, and you start it's off, quite similar. Right? Um, it's very similar. You write down three things you're thankful for. Um, and then, uh, three things that you're thankful for, uh, some, I think it's like a couple affirmations and then, uh, what good, th three good things that happened that day. And then I believe, uh, what you could do better. Yeah. I think three things you want to accomplish. Too. Three, oh, yeah, three things you want to accomplish. The next day. The, the next day. Yep. So it's three things you want to accomplish the next day. And then um, what you could have done better, which is what you could have done better is a great introspection piece. But it, mm -hmm. And like I said, it's, it's a very simple exercise. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't take long. If you're tired, you can do it in probably, it's five minutes journal. You can do it in probably 30 seconds if you want yeah. to just scribble. But it's interesting how you find, you know, three, three good things that happened today, right? That are three things you're grateful for. Yeah. However you want to frame that. And that, that becomes very difficult when you're in a dark space. Yeah, right? absolutely. But as you as you start doing the exercise more, it's really easy to find where I I would need more space. Like you'd end yeah. up being yeah. like, I, need, I could do like two pages of yep. things. And, yep. and those are, it's a, just a, it's a matter of perspective for a lot of the, the things when you're, when you're having, needing, needing something when you're going through a hard time. Right? Absolutely. One of the things like, so like when I was doing that with Kalia, like, I was going through a really hard time. And the crazy thing is, like, it was one of my best seasons. Mm -hmm. You know, it was one of my better seasons at that point. But I was still struggling so hard. 
And the other thing I was doing was like, okay, I'm going to do five push-ups every day, mm. you know? And no matter what fucking happens today, I still have those five push-ups I can hold on to. Those five, I did five push-ups, you know, and that's not a lot, but that's something I can be proud of, mm -hmm. you know? So like if the rest of the day was shit, I still have those. If the rest of the day was awesome. Okay, guess what? I also did five push-ups. Mm -hmm. That's pretty awesome, you know? But I like how in the book you were talking about what like three things you could do better. That's when I talk about snowboarding and when I coach snowboarding, rather than, okay, how did you fuck up? Okay, what can you do to better your snowboarding? Rather than focusing on the negative, oh, I speed checked, oh, I did this, okay. Rather than think, don't speed check, think, go straight. You mm -hmm. know, because if you focus on what you did wrong, you're gonna, I mean, that's gonna be in your head, rather than what you can focus on to do better. You know, so go straight, uh, find your line you know those like rather yeah positive reinforcement rather than negative reinforcement exactly yep yeah. yep that's really smart no that's that's really great uh yeah it, instead of saying like d like an another example would be you know instead of saying like don't hinge at the waist when i spin it would be like stand like what's the positive like like keep your back straight or keep your body fundamentals bend your knees bend your knees yes yep. exactly Bend your knees. Yeah, so so find the positive reinforcement as opposed to focusing on what went wrong. That's a, yep. that's a good flip. I spent uh, my last day at Big Snow. I went back on Tuesday because I was sick as fuck. Yeah. And I wanted to go back. Um, it's in New Jersey, uh, indoor place in New Jersey. But I was like, okay, today I'm going to work on bending my knees. And so, like, I spent the whole day just doing, like, fundamentals, you know, 50-50s, backboards, um, front lips. Front lips are scary. Mm -hmm. um, but... You know, I was like, okay, the whole, like, I'm going to focus on doing, on keeping my knees bent the whole day, you know? But, yeah. No, that's sick. I love that. I love that. And going back to uh, what could I have done better in the day or whatever the question, that, um, the, you know, um, one of the things that I always write in there, it's so funny, is like, not look at my phone so much. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, just so a, how could you reframe that? Uh, spend more time being present yeah. and uh, or avoid distractions. Or no, that's still a negative. Go outside, maybe Go outside, read yeah. a book. Yeah. The positive reinforcement mm. would be, yep. yeah. Spend more time reading, spend more time reading. That so yeah. Be, as opposed to don't look at your phone. Yep. Right? That's yep. Like, that's a, that would be a much Give better. yourself a couple options to what mm -hmm. you could do instead. Mm -hmm. I like that. Like reframes. Yeah. Cause a lot of times it's a matter of perspective of, of why the way we feel. Yep. And that's like with snowboarding, the biggest thing I use for like myself mentally is reframing it, you know? Um, yeah. Like if I'm like, Oh, don't fuck up. Don't clip on this rail. Okay. What do you think the first thing I'm going to do is, Yeah, clip you know, on the rail. Yeah. rather than like focus on full commit. So commit, like go fast and then like pop, mm -hmm. you know, fast pop turn, mm -hmm. you know, rather than don't clip. Yeah. Cause then you're clipping. Let's <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Let's change gears into. I know you have a ton of hobbies outside of snowboarding. Uh, I know we've been talking about snowboarding a lot. Uh, you, er, earlier, you just popped a roller skate on the deck. Yeah. You know, so if I wanted to go roller skate later. So yep, yep. That's incredible. <laughs> what else we got going on? Uh, so last summer I started picking up hobbies because I decided my world needed to expand outside of snowboarding. Mm -hmm. Um, so. Roller skating a little bit. Uh, hacky sack. I enjoy the sack. Um, <laughs> respect. Let's give it. Thank you. A respect the sack. Yeah, you got to respect the sack. Yep. Um, you know, it's good, fun cardio. Um, tricks myself into doing cardio. <laughs> um, I uh, make jewelry. Uh, that's something that I've kind of been getting into. Um, I've just been fucking around with art. Um I tell myself I uh, I enjoy making shitty art because, again, perfectionism in the lens. Um, <clears throat> I used to be, like, paralyzed. I couldn't even, like, do any art because I was so worried, like, oh, this looks bad. I'm like, no, you know what? I'm going to enjoy making shitty art. Like, And people are like, oh, no, it's not. Like, that's not the point. It could be good or whatever. I don't give a shit. The shit, the point is I like doing it. Mm -hmm. It's the act of doing it. It's not the outcome that I care about. So, um, yeah, art, um, I enjoy dancing in the bathroom, singing music. Um, I don't know, man, uh, reading, I've gotten back into that. I got a footnote about gardening. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do enjoy gardening. Um, I have, <laughs> I have, um, some indoor plants that I have, and then, uh, actually grew some tomatoes this summer and some basil. So I'd love to have like a full on guard of my own, but I'm never around in the spring and summer, which is whatever. Mm -hmm. 
That's awesome. Yeah, tomatoes are a nice, easy one. They always <laughs> they're they so provide. good. You don't, even, you don't actually even have to do much. Yeah, they just, just yeah. kind of kill it, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's killer. And I know our audience loves the talk about uh, diet and things like that. And so um, we we constantly get pushed to ask our guests about what their thoughts are on on their diet, what kind of diet they're into, and what they recommend. Yeah. So I'm um, I personally uh eat plant-based so that means like um i for the majority uh just eat as many plants as i can you know um i have this app on my phone that's really nice uh it's called um it's basically how not to die and it's just like a checklist so like eat three servings of beans a day like uh two potato, like two uh, vegetables, like some, bro like a cruciferous vegetable, all that sort of stuff. So I try to check off as many of those boxes as I can. Um, but I used to get really like, and I know a lot of athletes get this, like I became obsessed with food and I had a lot of food rules and different things that like I couldn't eat or I could eat. And a lot of it was tied to like acne so things that like I thought would make me break out I was like I can't eat like sugar anymore like and super like scared and obsessed about it um but I'm trying to shift like and one of the reasons I'm plant-based and not vegan is because I want to allow myself to have flexibility to enjoy food you know and like if I f if I'm out with people and there's fucking pizza and I feel like having a piece of pizza. I'm going to fucking have a piece of pizza. You know, if I'm on a podcast and they offer me fucking larva with <laughs> cheddar on it, I'm going to fucking eat the larva with cheddar, you know? <laughs> Got to slap some respect on Love that. chowing that down. But, you know, I feel really good eating lots of plants. Um, I feel lighter, um, you know, but the most important thing for me is to make sure I eat enough. Mm -hmm. You know, because I, um, I want to be strong. I want to have a lot of muscle. And I think a lot of people, myself included, we eat a lot. People who struggle to gain weight, we really eat a lot less than we think we do. We think, oh, we're eating so much. But our perception of food is really distorted. So I'm just trying to figure out how to, like, have a healthy relationship with food. Mm -hmm. You know, that's really, like, my move right now. Um, because, uh, yeah, it's can be really hard to do that especially in like a uh, high intensity sport you know mm -hmm. um but i think as long as you're eating like relatively clean you know i think 80 percent is good enough mm -hmm. you know if you if you eat well 80 percent of the time you can eat pretty much whatever you want the other 20 percent mm -hmm. you know yeah 70 percent overhaul wellness is diet i heard recently a statistic um you can fact check me on that i don't know if that's true yeah. or not but oh that's that's a compelling number you know think about what impact that has on what you put on your body mm -hmm. damn 70 percent yeah because you go to the gym and work out like a maniac but if you don't put the right foods back in absolutely it doesn't, doesn't matter at all really yeah for sure so uh beautiful i think we should get into we're a little late on it but i think it's time for a little name that video part oh no. Okay, so name that video part is presented by Topro Backyard Rope Toes. Uh, I got a chance to ride one last winter over at Bjorn's house. The thing is incredible. Buds, you were there. Yeah, it was good times. Uh, you can basically trans transform any backyard hill into your own private ski resort. Um, this thing's not janky. It's built very well. You know, I've built uh, with Alex Andrews, the guy I own my cabin with. I think we built three rope toes now, and they've all pretty much shit the bed. So uh, we finally decided to get a tow pro rope tow and uh it's awesome it fits in the back of a truck uh it fits in the back of a pickup truck you can run off a generator it can run off a shore power uh it can be set up in under an hour and included with every purchase is a one year service and parts warranty you can tow three to five people up the hill at once and uh basically the thing's awesome so head on over to towpro-lifts.com again towpro-lifts.com and Transform your backyard into your own private ski resort. Like we said earlier, uh, the rope toes are incredible for repetition and getting good, and they're just a game changer. So use code BOMBHOLE if you're interested in getting one of these for 5% off. Again, at topro-lifts.com, or you can find them on Instagram at toprolifts. And with that being said, let's get into name that video part. So, um, Lexi, how are we feeling on a scale of 0 through 10? A hundred percent. I am a hundred percent confident. I will not get a single one. <laughs> <laughs> Lifted on us. 
Okay, so it could be red as a zero as well, but we'll, we'll put it as a hundred. Here we I go. Like 100. <laughs> Here we go. One thing to keep in mind is he usually puts something that you might know. So keep keep that in mind. He tries to figure it out. Yeah, that I, I figured you might try to help me out by doing something like that, but no fucking clue. Still no dice. No clue. Okay, well. You um, can tell by the blank look on yeah, my face. Yeah, I'm like. <laughs> for the listeners, she was glazed over and confused looking. A little There's bit no bewildered. Clue. <laughs> um, so, you know, it was one of the guest question askers. That was Naima from... Uh, the uninvited. Uh, she's going to be very disappointed oh, in you. Oh, I'm sorry, Naima. But we're going to give you a participation you. award. It's a um, participation dope. award. Everybody <laughs> and, wins. Uh, it's a bomb hole cooler filled with bomb hole merch. Uh, Jules filled that thing up. I don't know what we even Thank have Thank you, in Jules. There. What do we got? Some mugs, some Ooh, t-shirts. We got a mug. We got some dope oh. stickers. Oh, we got a beanie. Uh, we got... Ooh. Oh, this is shorts. sick. I like that beanie. Yep. Oh, socks. socks. I need some socks. Oh, yeah. All of that stuff is available at bombhole.com. <gasps> Another shirt. Oh, and we got some shorts, too. Oh, yeah. We got oh, shorts. Damn. She uh, filled that thing up for you. Thanks, Jules. Yep. So Woo! We're, we're dialed in. Uh, this is fresh. I like these. I might wear these through the airport tomorrow. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. Those, you're going to be looking fresh in those. Dude. You might be, I, I'm going to warn you. you might yeah, be getting, there's no pockets. You might be getting a couple too many compliments. Uh, oh. Too many compliments. Yeah, that's a, that's, a com that's a common factor with those. Um, I'm down. More people talk to me, yeah. please. <laughs> <laughs> please. Anybody, please. please. If you see me, talk to me. Please Anyone, talk to me. Please talk to me. I swear I don't bite often. Often. Okay. Often. Easy word. Uh, part two of name that video part. This is for the people listening or watching on YouTube, Lexi. So you don't have to answer this one. Luckily, okay, uh, cool. <laughs> not that she's gonna get in. <laughs> uh, and you guys know the drill at this point. If you basically, if you know what song this is and from what video, comment on the photo of Lexi when uh, the episode comes out, and you will get a little prize pack from the bomb hole. Here we go. I am I know exactly who that is. Yeah? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys for playing. Name that video. Right I have complete... I have complete faith in the audience. They can definitely get oh, that. Yeah. Oh, definitely somebody get that. gets it. Oh, yeah. There's you guys are quick. smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's. I think some people scrub right to it and like skip the podcast and like find <laughs> oh, it. Oh, really? Yeah, and then like comment right away. Pretty sure. Damn, that's dedication. Yeah, they figure it out quick. Uh, Buds, you want to hit a quick Patreon for us? Yes, this one is from Hunter Golden. Being from Minnesota, where do you ride? Which you kind of already answered, but the real question here is, which do you like more, lapping the tow ropes or riding the mountains? Okay, first of all, hi, Hunter. I hope you're doing well. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, you know Hunter? No. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Sounded like you did. I like that. Hi. Just got to say hi, you know, mm -hmm. support the Patreon. Um, uh, Highland Hills is my home hill. Uh, I bounce around to Afton. That was my home hill for a while, too. And then I frequent Trollhagen as well. Um, but I kind of bounce around everywhere. Uh, Trollhagen's uh, just across the border uh, in Wisconsin. So we claim it in Minnesota, um, but it's really in Wisconsin. Um, what was the second part of the question? Which, which do you like better, lapping the tow ropes or riding the mountains? Do you have a preference? Tower ups, hundred percent. I die. A little part of me dies inside every time I sit on a chairlift. Mm -hmm. I just, really? Yeah, a little part of my soul dies. I just like I get sad. Um, <laughs> but yeah, hundred percent tower ropes. Uh, there's no feeling like it. Uh, have you guys been on tower ropes before? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then you know, there's like a special type of high you get from mm -hmm. like riding on the tower ropes. Like literally, you feel like it's like a fever dream. Like mm -hmm. you just so intense, and you're like, ah, oh my god. And you can just be impulsive and you yeah. can just like fly off. You might be following somebody. You just kind of mm -hmm. get jacked up and you can use like if you're an ADD person, it's so good because you're just like you hit the rail and then again, you can just la get yep. right back on the rail and 100%. just try it. And that's the best because like sometimes like I'll be so I'll get jacked up to do like a front two on a ch and then on a chairlift. By the time you get back up to the top, you're like, I lost the vinegar. What was I even going to try? Dude, Shit, 100%. Right? That's why I love tar ups because literally like you just get that repetition over and over and over again. And, mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's a feeling like no other. 
Mm-hmm. I was at uh, MLK Day um, at like After Alps. I was there for like eight, ten hours, just riding super hard, uh, like really intense. And then I got home and just like collapsed and like fell asleep on the floor. Mm-hmm. So tired. <laughs> Dude, a lot of people, it's like an hour on a rope toe is like five at a at a yep. chair. Yep. So one thing I want to change gears into here is uh, when I'm observing, you know, I don't know you well, but you appear to me as somebody that tries hard. And I just think that in this world of snowboarding, it's kind of cool to act like you don't care, act like you don't give a shit. We all want to like have that persona of just like, yeah, like, oh, this is easy, like whatever, you know. But I think uh, it's fucking badass to try really hard. Yeah. Would you like to elaborate on it? Do you agree with that st- statement? Yeah, I um, I try really hard. I work my ass off. Um, there's Okay, first of all, I don't understand the point of pretending like, oh, like, yeah, this is really easy, like, blah, blah, blah. No, I really fucking care about snowboarding. I really fucking want to push myself to be the best I can. I want to, any trick I see a guy do, I get a little jealous. I'm like, oh, I want to get that, you know? Um, and so... Yeah, I think, um, I don't know, showing that you give a shit about it and you give a shit about, like, trying to land the tricks and be the best you can. Like, I try really fucking hard and I really, like, because I want to be the best I can, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. Awesome. And then and just to add to that even more so, you know, when I was doing my research, I found talking to some people, they would say, you know, uh, for example, you would, write a list of tricks you want to do the next day or for, for, you know, uh, the, the game of snow or things like yep. that. What type of, like, do you, are you a big list maker, goal setter, things like that? Um, it goes back and forth. I find, so when I do competitions, I'm, uh, I usually pick out the tricks I want to do beforehand. Uh, so like at a rail jam, let's say like a detour. I knew I had probably like, what's like 10 runs, 15 runs. Cause hiking sucks. Uh, Side note, rail jumps and tall ropes are so much better. So much better. <laughs> um, but, uh, do, do, do. We're talking about your approach to rail jams and lists and things like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I would pick out the tricks I'd do beforehand, like on a list and stuff, and then I'd walk through them. Um, but, yeah, I, um, yeah, I'll, like, do lists and stuff, but... I don't know. I try to keep it like mellow and everything, you know, like I'll go with the flow and it's just really to help me focus in and like prime the tricks I want to do. So I work on those foundation steps, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, but yeah. Oh, I think goal setting is important too for that. We, I was always a list maker for every Mm -hmm. video part I did. It was like a list of tricks you want to do. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I definitely, I have a good amount in my head that I want to get this next year. So Mm -hmm. pretty hyped. Let's talk about hot dogs and handrails because I know you've had some success 2018, 2019. Yeah. So um, first, I want to start with the 2018 hot dogs and handrails because this is kind of where the journey begins. Um, I I was 19. I uh, flew out to L.A. by myself, rented a car. There's one place I would rent a car to like a 19 year old. They put on hella fees, you know, mm-hmm. Um Drove out, didn't, like, I knew there was probably people that I was going to know there, but I didn't reach out to anyone, um, because, like, again, kind of shy, so, like, I stayed in Airbnb, um, didn't, like, hang out with anyone, went to Hot Dogs and Handrails, fucking went so hard, um, Jill afterwards came up to me, like, a year later or whatever, and she's like, girl, you did not need to go that hard, you should have chilled out. Long story short, uh, got a concussion, didn't realize it, kept snowboarding, uh, then I fractured my shoulder blade. Um, I have a little scar on the shoulder from it. Oh, damn. Um, yeah. Didn't realize I fractured my shoulder blade, so I'm like, it's a fucking comp, okay? It's the biggest comp. I had tried to get in the previous year. I'm, like, fucking here to go ham. Um, and then I ended up breaking my ankle. So um, <laughs> I was in a ton of pain, but I still, like, went and hung out with everyone. A couple of people, like, gave me piggyback rides to after party and stuff. Um And then for the next 24 hours, I was either in tears or on the verge of tears. Um, Packed my, like, big-ass snowboard bag, drove myself back to the airport, flew home, and then, like, I was like, oh, yeah, it's probably just a sprain. Like, it hurts. Like, 
it's not that bad, but like it hurts a ton. My face was all banged up. I had like a big like bump on my chin and stuff. Um, and then the doc was like, yeah, so you broke your ankle. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Um, she used the word crushed uh, to describe my ankle. <laughs> um, and then uh, my dad was like, you should get your shoulder blade checked out. And I was like, okay, dad, sure, whatever. I broke my shoulder blade. Like, yeah, sure. Um, she's like, yeah, you broke your shoulder blade. I'm like, shit okay um wasn't expecting that and because it didn't hurt at all like I had snow burn but like that was chill um and so I ended up spending a while on a scooter <laughs> just like scootering around um but yeah so that was my first hot dogs and handrails mm -hmm. uh the recovery for that was like pretty fucking intense yeah, two um, injuries at once is and brutal. you travel yeah. home with all your bags all broken up like yep that. yep Jeez. afterwards some of the snowboard mag people are like dude you should have told me you were hurt like we could have driven you to the airport it's like no like i'm fine i can do it by myself you know uh but that was the i can't ask for help like i have to be strong you know mm -hmm. which is uh, bullshit but <laughs> um <laughs> yeah so coming back to hot dogs and handrails 2019 that was my previous year. So I had a pretty, like, worst case scenario, you know? But coming in, I was like, this is going to be my comeback. I posted something on Instagram, like, this will be my comeback, you know? And that's when I read the Champion's Mind for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I went in with, uh, I had just gotten on O'Neill the previous year. Um, and I went out with the crew there, and, like, it was a super fun time, you know? Went to the premiere for Unconditional, uh, Jamie Anderson's Snowboard movie. And when we got, uh, we got to Hot Dogs and Handrails and um, I was just, I was really in the zone. Like I was all focused, you know, and I ended up fucking doing amazing. I got first place. Woo! Thank you. <laughs> um, which, you know, I did what I said I was going to do. I made a comeback and I fucking went hard, you know, um, and I really give a lot of credit to that book because it really helped me come in with a calm you know, demeanor and stuff. Um, and then, yeah, so I was really stoked with that. Um, couldn't, like, believe it. Like, my all my hard work paid off. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, then I went home and I was like, okay, I have to write this paper for college. Um, and my manager, or the uh, person, uh, my TM came down, he was like, or came up, he was like, okay, you have to come hang out with people. Like, you can't, like, just sit, like, I know you have your paper, blah, blah, blah. So I came out and hung with people a little bit and then went back and did homework. That's sick. Respect. I was there. That you killed it. That was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. That is that's a bold that's a bold claim to claim it and then go do it is yeah. You got, that has to feel good. I imagine that feels good. And you probably just like I guarantee tons and tons of people are buying that a champion's mind uh, book because right in my head I'm literally like add to cart add to <laughs> <it> too. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I'm like, oh, I gotta give this thing a read. Um, Maybe with the Cliff Notes, dog. Yeah, I'll give, I'll give Bud. You'll hear it on the air when I'm when I'm regurgitating yeah. what I read yeah, to our next exactly. guest after we read it. <laughs> but um, let's get into a little section called Hot Takes. Uh, we just kind of, what's your take on things? Uh, so we, we like to ask the MJ, uh, Michael Jordan, and or greatest of all time snowboarder, both male and female, who you got for us? I would say uh, male, uh, RP. I really Ryan Paul. Yeah, Woo! Ryan Paul. That's a first, That's a first and we yeah. like it. I I started riding at Afton and I really I really look up to you Ryan. Um you know, the way he does everything like I swear like I fucking watched him do hard way back three onto this kink rail tame dog out and then he does it switch. Like nothing. Um so I really look up to him and his riding and he's such a dope person, you know. I really don't give a shit about someone until I meet them and realize they're a cool person. Like, otherwise I don't care who you are. Like if you're a cool person, like I'm going to be hella hyped on your riding, you know? Um, so yeah. And then growing up, I, two women I really looked up to, uh, one was Gabby Vittiri. Yeah. Nice. Um, she, we were on Burton together and I, she was just so fucking cool. I like, she was everything I wanted to be. And then Molly Aguirre was another one. Oh, yeah. One. That's <laughs> sick. Yeah. Those are uh, both haven't been named and great answers. Yeah. Yes. They were so sick. Just like super good role models for me growing up as a kid. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Are we going to skip over the trick terminology that I've never heard? Tame dog out? Oh, that's a front flip. All right. <laughs> so, so the opposite of a wild cat. A wild cat is a back flip. What's mm -hmm. the opposite of a wild cat? A tame dog. It's like a cartwheel with no hands except mm -hmm. forward. Wow. 
Love it. I think yeah. I don't, I'm guessing that I, I don't know the uh, origin. I'm gonna say Canadian because Canadians Sounds came Canadian. up with the Wildcat. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're gonna have to do a fact check on that. Love Team the Canadian. I've never yeah. heard it. Before. Team Dog is a front flip. Um, or Team like, Dogs are big in Minnesota. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, a lot of uh, it's yeah. kind of like the uh, cat and a cow almost. Yep, yep, <laughs> cat cow. <laughs> it's very similar, but it's like a cat cow just off the end of the rail. That's perfect. Yep. Okay, if you uh, if you had one Hollywood actor play your role in life, who would it be? Oh shit! Who do you want it to be? We're just gonna go with Scarlett Johansson because I've heard woo. I look like her. I or see she, that. I've heard she looks like me. She looks like you. Yeah, that's a great answer. She's uh, plus, she's so cute. She's a badass too. Yeah, she's a badass. I mean, she usually plays a badass. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I don't know if she really is. Next question: Favorite person to party with? Who you got? I'm not much of a partier. Um, you can party sober though, like party yeah. sober. Yeah. Okay, there's um, a lot of different way. Partying's, you know, we're yeah, we're, yeah. we're, like, we're, we're almost partying right now. Like yeah. we're borderline party. This is pretty much partying. <laughs> I'd say uh, here right now. This is this is the vibe. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Oh Perfect. wow. We're we're, nice. we're so we're your favorite people to party with. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Woo! let's give ourselves a super air horn. Yes. Let's... God, I'm feeling good after I. Be... <laughs> Woo! I now I'm on a whole different. I'm on a whole yeah. different level now with that. The vibe in here just even got better. <laughs> so, so we like to talk about and something you don't experience on the rope toe, but um, you know, on this show, it's a it's a it's a kind of a hot little topic is the beaver slap when you when you pick your board up. Just done your front foot and you slap it on the ground to get the snow off. Um, you know, a lot of times it's a bit of a flex in the lift line. You know, a flex? How? Like when you do a real loud one, everybody looks at you. you really? Know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you don't think it's a flex? I are you, don't are you, think are you, it's are a you, flex. Are you, are you an avid uh, beaver slapper? Uh, what I do is I typically turn my board like on the heel edge and like bop it like that. Oh, she does a side bop. She yeah. does the old side bop. Because well, I think it's more new, effective. Uh, our new bumper sticker up there. I love beaver slap. Yeah, a lot of <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, so she maybe we should do I love side bop. Side, side bop. bop. Yeah. Yeah, she's more of a side bopper. But okay. like lifties get pissed because like it will put like a little dent in like the lip uh, and Lifties everything. don't like the beaver slap either. Okay, okay. Lifties guard that. They yeah. guard that. We well, almost need, the, we they got to fix it. We almost need to bring a lifty in and, and get a little take on Get a take uh, from the lift. Basically yeah. what their yeah. thoughts are on when people are doing the side bob, the beaver slap, yep. get yep. some takes. Do an know. ask the lifty. Yeah, ask the lifty. Yeah, we I have like to that. track one that of those That would down. be a really good part. part ask <laughs> the lifty. A little segment. Yeah. A little segment yeah. for ABU maybe. Ask get yeah. some people calling in. Ask the lifty. Yeah, we'll have to track down a lifty <laughs> and uh, see what they say on that. Uh, generally, I've, I'd say they're, they're default mode aggressive. Um, when it comes to you know uh, that territory, you're in their world. You're you are in absolutely world. in their they world. They own that lift line. They own that. But uh, also, shout out to Lifty. Who won't be able to get on the lift without well, them. That's the thing. Yes. They, they, can, they can get you out of there. Pull your mm -hmm. card. You know? I was a Lifty for a season. Really? Yep. Ah. Highland Hills. Yeah. Um, I feel like Midwest people don't really give a shit about that. That's only something I've heard like you say or like a problem in the West. Okay. Yeah. It's just, uh, you know, a, a friend, uh, a skier brought, brought it to my attention. I never even noticed snowboarders do it. Yeah. But, uh, skiers probably find it hella the, annoying. The skier, uh, like it's <laughs> actually, yeah. Uh, Leah's, Leah's like, uh, sister did this, ski did this guy named, yep. uh, yeah. Named Patty and, uh, shout out to Patty. Patty he, he, he was asking me basically, he's like, what's up with the, the big beaver slap in the lift line? And, he, and he's a skier. So I never even noticed we did it until I got another uh, perspective. He, he kind of shedded some light on that. Yeah. And and uh, now it it's, done. it's a topic of conversation. You know, I like to hit a big old one chest out. You know, <laughs> chest, chest out. out. Just want to feel really good. Puff, slap. Puff yeah, it up. Kind of boom, after, boom. You have, after you have a good run. Just you're like, yeah, flexing in I'm the line. Here. Like head, head yeah. high, kind of ready to be confrontational. You want everybody to see you. Extremely you're confrontational. like, yep, I'm hot shit. I just landed <laughs> switch back loose. Exactly. Peacocking out there. It's, it's a little bit of, it's a form of peacocking. <laughs> okay, we got one more hot take. If you could see one musical artist dead or alive, who would it be? Didn't, oh, okay. Um... I would have to say Beastie Boys. Fucking love the Beastie Boys. They were my favorite band growing up. Um, my first edit from when I was like six, I had the Beastie Boys in them. Um, yeah, absolutely love the Beastie Boys. My first edit in high school had the Beastie Boys. Fuck yes. Hell yeah. What, yeah. what um, song was it? It was from Check Your Head. Okay. One of those just instrumental, yep. sick vibe Dope. tracks they had on there. What about you? What you remember the track? Sabotage. Oh Sabotage. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, we had that in rotation hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. did you see that uh, show that came out recently? There. No. I think it was on HBO. Yeah, there is some new doc. Out, new right? doc that they're okay. on stage 
just talking about the history of the Beastie Boys, you would love it. Dude, okay, Ooh. hell yeah. Um, I don't it's, watch it's like incredible. shows often. This but one, if you like the Beastie Boys, okay. they show photos throughout their whole history. Dude, that's sick. They tell their whole story. Yeah. And then, you know, remembering their fallen member. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, he used to snowboard here. Yeah, so when I was in uh, New York, my friend Hannah was telling me about that. Yeah, he he got super to, into that. He used to get a bird pass and come out and stay with my good friend Tina Bassett. Oh, that's would, so uh, sick. Yeah, just come out here and shred. Just love snowboarding. Yeah, yeah. So rest in peace. Rest in peace. R.I.P. to one of the greatest. Now let's get into a guest question. We got one last one from Casey. Here we go. Hey, Lexi. It's Casey. So stoked to hear that you're on the bomb hole. I uh, just want to let you know I've been a big fan of you long before we became friends. I looked up to you when you were nine years old, making hit videos at Highland Hills, showing all the boys who's boss. One thing I've always noticed about you is that you're a confident, independent ass woman. You're the type of girl that will walk up to a guy with no hesitation and get his number. (laughs) My question is, have you always been like that? Where did that confidence come from? And can you teach me? Can't wait to hear your episode of The Bomb Hole. Much love, Lexi. See you soon. I love you, Casey. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. I I kind of go in the mindset of, like, in Minnesota, like, no one knows who I am. But, like, I, it's, it's weird, like, realizing, like, oh, these people you've known forever and you didn't think knew who you were, like, actually, like, watch your videos growing up, you know? Um, so... Thanks, Casey. I love you. Thank you for the support. Um, you're dope as fuck. And shout out Pink Dollar Posse. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it's a common occurrence where I'll go up and be like, hey, you're cute. Can I have your number? Uh, just to like random ass dudes or whatever. Or like whoever's hot, like <laughs> chick, guy, doesn't really matter. Um, but, you know, I think it's, I got rejected a lot growing up. Um, I've never been like, I've never been the girl that, like, everyone's like, oh, my God, I really want to date her. Like, oh, my God, oh, my God. Like, I've been, like, single my entire life, um, which, like, I'm only 22, so that's not long, but, like, when all your friends are dating and stuff. But really it just comes from, like, you have nothing to lose. And, like, if they say no, like, okay, like, you're fine, you walk away. Um, It's weird because, like, I, like, I get really, I'm really confident in certain situations and other situations I'm, like, (laughs) haha <laughs> like I don't want to be here um but yeah uh that's just one of those things where this is like it's just a game like I'm just gonna go like say hi like I shoot my shot n- nothing to lose um shooter's gonna shoot you know I'm gonna shoot my shot you got nothing shooter's to lose shoot. and the quicker people realize that the better because yeah what kind of what kind of success rate we talking I'm just got a curiosity that's shooting a the question. shot you know like <laughs> like you know, I can't give it a number, but uh, enough where I'm still doing it. Yes. Okay. I, I, I think you should encourage. I think we that's a we should encourage that uh, yeah. amongst our culture. Well, right. and here's the thing. Like, people aren't going to come up and talk to me, so I might as well make it happen. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to wait around for some, like, random ass person to, like, come up and talk to me. So, like, might as well try and, mm-hmm. like, get something going myself. Got You're going to miss every shot you don't take. So. Exactly. Wayne Gretzky and or Michael Scott. Uh, you miss 100 percent. Michael, shots, you don't Michael Scott, Michael Scott. Okay, yeah. So, okay, I think I think my extreme fear of rejection would keep me back from doing that. <laughs> I can't say I've ever done. I probably have when I was like blacked out. Oh, girl! Like I've <laughs> gone up to people and been like, "Hey, you're like really cute. Can I have your Snapchat?" And they're like, "No." I'm like, "Okay, walk away." Oh wow! See, I'd tuck tail. I think <laughs> tuck tail. I'd tuck tail. And, and it was like, like, "All right, oh man." It was really embarrassing. Like it was like I was in my swimsuit going to the hot tub. Like, "Hey, you're cute." Like they're like, "No." I'm like, "Okay, well, I still look good as fuck. Like I'll be <laughs> fine." Oh wow! I like it. It's I like mean, it's <laughs> great that as you get older and married, you realize that the opposite sex or the same sex whatever you're into mm-hmm. is just as nervous <laughs> as you and just as self-conscious mm. yep. you gotta just get out there and yeah. do this yeah there's a type for everybody yep. so they're out there just yeah start talking i enjoy making moves i think it's uh fun and uh i don't know it's fun it's kind of fun seeing other people be like little nervous you mm-hmm. know oh yeah <laughs> people squirm around it's yep <laughs> Well, we guys been, actually probably love that. Huh? Yeah, huh? yeah. There's guys listening <laughs> yeah. to this like, wh- why doesn't that happen to me? Yeah, why, does that, so why doesn't that happen like, to me ever? Guys okay. are so shy <laughs> for the most part. Yeah. 
when um, it comes to that anyways. Yeah. Great topic. I think uh, we've been we've been going for a minute here. Before we start kind of wrapping this thing up, we should talk about your snowboard, your sponsors, and uh, our listeners love knowing about the setup. I know you, you ride for Nitro. What kind yep. of board? What kind of bindings? What's your setup all about? Nitro. I ride the Nitro Mercy. Um, it's a dope board. Uh, it's hella light compared to my last board. So, like, when I popped on this one for the first time this season, I was like, holy shit. Like, I did, like, a bat switch back board, and, like, I popped around 270 i'm like did i even just do a 270 like i whipped it around so fast um but i like the hi um <laughs> sorry <laughs> just goes just right like, back <laughs> <laughs> um no it um yeah so i really like the nitro mercy it's fun it's pretty flexible um good to get like some presses on and stuff um but yeah, it's a 142, so I ride a pretty short board. Um, gender specific board, or yeah, it is gender specific. Um, I don't know how much uh, crossover Nitro does with like gender neutral boards, um, but I really like sticking with the 142, and so it's kind of hard to find sizes sometimes. So tend to go female boards, but um, yeah, and then bindings. I think I have like the Ivy bindings. Um, which are super comfy. I really like the nitro bindings. They're like really squishy and light and they grip my feet really well. And then I'm a big fan of the boots. I have, what is it? Um, I've, I've tried a couple different ones this year, but I think I, the feints I really like. Um, I really, so I broke my ankle a few years ago now. And so I've like had ankle pain and ankle problems and all that stuff. And yeah, I really like the internal ankle brace they have. And it, the boots feel like they have a really good stability for that. What kind of flex? Are we talking medium, stiff, soft? I don't know. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's Squishy. like a probably like a medium, we'll okay. say. Yep. Um, flexible enough. Uh, yeah. I I just like cranking my boots hella tight. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Sick. Another little sidebar there. Uh, if you've had ankle problems, I rock a stiff boot. The boot behind me, the Team 3, the 32 Team 3. It's like after destroying my ankle i've i've upgraded to a stiff boot and same anyway. here dude ankles are tough once you mm -hmm. hurt them they hurt dude. yeah doesn't really yeah. go away what about anything specific with your board do you do anything weird like uh edge wise like angle wise tune your edges we get or rid of those lean. fucking edges we you go no edge no edge you Full like bev. they you don't really like turn in minnesota do they the, the hills Just like rail to rail to rail the, well you have hella ice so like oh, you'll true. go after like you we have hella bomb holes. Like, mm -hmm. it's funny you guys call bomb hole. Like, do you even know what that is out here? Uh, out here in Utah? Yeah, it's when you land off on a powder jump and you make a hole. Oh, okay. So I always think of bomb holes as, like, uh, after a rail. I, that's the Minnesota version. Yeah, yeah yep. it's the, still like the a, Minnesota a wedged hole. in hole. Yep, it's like a two-foot, like, Repeated ice. Repeated bombs, basically. Yep, it's from ice, you know, and, like, you'll get, like, yeah, hella ice. So, yeah, there's hella ice, but you just, you kind of just go fast, point it, mm -hmm. um, and like drift. Mm -hmm. My my strategy is like don't use your edges, just kind of drift. Like You're talking shh, fast and the furious, huh? Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. We go hella drifting. But fast little, and the furious. Uh, Ken, he's ten going Ken Block. Minnesota he's going drift. Ken Block on him, <laughs> oh. kind of. You know. Yeah. So Joe's I get Jim Kana. He's going. She's going Jim Kana between the rails. Got it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I get rid of my front edges. Jim Kana. Front front board. Jim Kana. Boom. Jim Kana. What's Jim that? Jim Kana is like the rally cars that drift around fast. And the okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um. Yeah. So I get rid of my edges and then I try to keep it like. Pretty, like, normal stance. I think it's, like, 19 and then, like, 9 or whatever. I've been playing with my stance. I don't really... Um, this whole snowboard setup thing is really weird. And, like, I'm just trying not to put my bindings on backwards. Like, mm -hmm. I've done that before. <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> yep, oh, yeah. yep. Not backwards, but there are the yep, wrong foot. Yep, yep, All of a sudden, your ratchets are on the wrong side. Like, this Someone feels calls a little odd. Um, don't feel bad if you do that. Setting up your shit, it happens to everybody. Yeah. Definitely done that more than once, but yeah. Love um, it when someone calls you out for that. <laughs> people like, call you out? Well, if you see your shit set up I've backwards. Never... I mean, they call you out to, one, make fun of you, and two, <laughs> you'll go home and fix them. Well, that's not my experience. I never, even when it was backwards, no one told me. Uh, they should. You know what's worse tell you. than putting bindings on backwards is skateboard trucks. Uh, oh. One time, oh. Tanner, doesn't ride Tanner, right. Tanner Pendleton put uh, his, his trucks on backwards. And then dropped into a mini ramp and basically pancaked uphill oh, into no. the he dropped in. <laughs> yeah, immediately like he leaned right and yeah, turns they don't, they don't work right. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, he got completely smoked. The uh, bushings wasn't there, all backwards. But, wasn't there, but the visual in my head's incredible. That's so, awesome. Uh, oh, you weren't even there. I wasn't there, but I have a mental image I've created for it. <laughs> I've, I've created one now too, <laughs> and it's Love hilarious. That. Yeah. So, 
Uh, but yeah, so at least you can still ride with backwards binding. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Uh, and then so booth and then what what other sponsors we got these days? Uh, my other sponsor is O'Neill. Shout out O'Neill. Um, they are outerwear and clothing. So this is an O'Neill shirt. It's like nice and embroidered and stuff. Um, yeah, they make dope shit. Um, they're like a snowboard surf skate brand, I think. Um, but yeah, so I use them for outerwear. Absolutely love their outerwear. Really good bright colors. And then uh, they have dope street clothes. So really big fan and six swimsuits um yeah so that sounds like and, a good and also you, <laughs> yeah you have a part in the o'neill video yes i do uh, street part switchback lip on the big <laughs> drop rail the yep. switchboardy to front board she's got some heaters heaters in there. so you and melissa Rotano's in there as well video is called short notice i believe right? yes and uh you can find a link in our show notes yeah, if we'll you want to see that up check out her video part in there it's awesome uh what uh, what do you got for plans in the in the future what, what's next yeah, so I'm going to be working on my project this next season, uh, Power Project. Um, like, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but I really want it to highlight uh, queer athletes um, and give them a voice. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be working on that. Uh, I have a couple people who are going to help me with that. Uh, so basically just doing a shit ton of street, um, hopefully doing some ride day events, um, I want to do more stuff with O'Neill and Nitro. Side note, uh, they are both very supportive of women snowboarding. Uh, they support me, and that's pretty fucking dope. Nitro is going to do, like, a ride day event this year, um, which is super sick, like, females only, you know. And so when I was actually talking to uh, the sponsors and, like, trying to figure out if I should go with them, like, what, one of the biggest things was, like, how how do you view women snowboarding, you know? And everything they were saying and, like, every they, I was 100% vibing with and everything like I said, like I was really feeling heard, which is really important when you're with a company, you know, because when you're in a big company, you know, it's really easy to just get lost as a rider, you know, kind of get put on the back burner. Again, shout out to my sponsors. I'm really, you guys are amazing. I love the support um, and what you're doing for women's snowboarding. So thank you. So going to be hopefully collabing with them for the power project. And then, um, yeah, so Hella Street, going to do some uh, ride days. I want to do some coaching again this year. Really enjoy coaching. So, like, uh, some stuff with B2 Bounds. Do you know what B2 Bounds? Unfamiliar, no. Um, so, it's called, uh, so, Christine Savage and Mary Walsh own it. It's called. Oh, uh, uh, we have I heard do know yep. about this, yeah. Beyond the Boundaries. Um, so, when we were talking about, like, the, um, like, how to get more women involved and stuff, it's they do like adult women's camps and so what we do is we take uh women's riders into the park for the first time and we had an event at hood this last uh, or this summer and like it was really cool getting these women in there like who are like adults like 20s 30s 40s like 50s you know and they hit their first rail for the first time you know and their first jump and it's really cool to be there and facilitate that and like share my experience and like help them with like the mindset stuff that I've learned and, you know, um, and anal- how to like land the trick and what to change in your body and everything, like how you're approaching it. Um, so I want to do more coaching. I also coach at G team, shout out to G team, um, in Minnesota. So I have a cool group of girls there that I coach occasionally. Um, and then, yeah, I just want to keep having fun with snowboarding, you know, coming from a place where I fucking hated it. I, I want to I wanna do it in a way that fills my heart, you know, and um, I don't want to go back to how it was. So it's really important to me that my mindset in snowboarding is a good one. Mm-hmm. Well, that's been incredible. Uh, Lexi, I think your journey is going to inspire many mm-hmm. listeners, many young women, many young humans in general, uh, old and young alike, I, I should say. But I uh, love what you're doing. I love how you're authentically yourself. Um, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, and, uh, you know, to our listeners, to our Patreon members, to anybody that's bought a piece of merch or supported us, to our sponsors, thank you so much for allowing these conversations to happen. And uh, we will see you guys next week over and out from the bomb hole. Thank you.